Namaste, fam. Good to see all y'all. We're going to just check our uh, sound out here real quick. So I'm going to give you a cute little video. Used to think the world was flat. Really threw my hat into the crowd. I felt I had used up my quota of yearning. children at night isn't leo adorable i just can't help it <laughs> i hope everybody's doing well uh welcome to fearlessly authentic uh we are going to have yona on as our guest tonight um when he comes into the studio well i'll uh i'll add him in here yona but i want to say hi to everybody that is here uh, hi, Jimmy. If you guys have not gone over and followed Jimmy Saves the World on Twitter, you should go do that. Saves the world. I like that. <laughs> and it's like that. Um, we have epic titles. It is. It's, <laughs> it's very like, you know, it's it's very much like fearlessly authentic. You just know <laughs> yes. that she's like, you know, she she's out for it. Um, hi, Oz. How are you? I hope... Uh, I hope everybody's okay. Uh, yes, Kate, we are live. We're just doing a little bit of an intro and hanging out and uh, catching up with everybody before we start the stream. No, we have started the stream, silly. Well, I mean, started the show, show like with Yona, <laughs> that's all. Okay. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. Oh, do you guys hear this? He gives me a hard time. How does this sound? Like everything, the How sound. Is the sound? Is the sound okay? Jonah, I sent you the link on Twitter. How does it sound? You got echo on your voice. How you do I get turn echo the off. off? How do I do that? See the uh, the yellow knob in the first row, right above the first knob. Yep, that one. Uh, turn no. I that see second, which one it is. What am I supposed to do? Turn it all the way off. Which way is off? Towards the this left. Way? Yeah. Okay. You fixed it. How is that now, guys? Better. <laughs> All right, that works. So how is uh how is Oz doing? Yeah, good to see you, Oz. And we have Kate in here and we have Popeye. Oh my gosh, you're gonna loop us, Steve. I'm trying to stop it from doing that. <laughs> it just wasn't reacting to my touch. You're not on camera. I don't know what's going on with that. Um, you're black. I think your thing just said, fuck you, dude. It did. Let's try it again. All right, everybody. We are going to start. I'm going to... Oh, my gosh. You're upside down. <laughs> You were, you were. You showed up upside down. Was he upside down for everybody Come else? On. <laughs> Is he in Australia with Oz? Crikey! <laughs> so I am going to bring. I'm going to bring Yona in, so we can have. Um, what is this? Is this number five? I believe it's five or six. Uh, it's a multi-segmented history of the universe with Yona. Yeah, it's Yoda. it's 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 Yona, the Yoda. Doing some, um, you know, mind blowing uh, truths for us. So we're going to pull him in and uh, let's see how he is doing. All right. Here's the Yona. Now for <laughs> how are round you? five. Round five. We stayed Time up. to find that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. <laughs> yeah, we stayed up with Yona all uh, all morning uh, because the storms were coming in and we were. Uh, we were a little bit scared for Yona, so yeah, that was really crazy. There was uh, <laughs> there was like one particular storm. Yeah, there I, were tornadoes. And, and tornadoes, tracked. right? Yeah. And yeah, this tornado like started on the ground near Bay and Monette, Arkansas, and then went up through Leechville, Arkansas, and across Missouri, and then across Tennessee. And then up through Kentucky, ripped straight through the middle of Mayfield, kept ripping all the way to Fort Knox until it finally petered out. So, I mean, it ran for 
It's like almost Jeez, 250 uh, miles, right? Yeah, man. I mean, that's just like. God damn. When, what is the longest track crazy. of a fucking tornado, man? 250 miles? I what know. I mean, it, it's like, how are you going to set records on the freak storm in the middle? Well, anyways, I, I'll get all sidetracked. So uh, I think what helps me purify the doubts and the uncertainties and the stresses of the day is to go back to the prophecies of our elders because they comfort me and trying to make sense of the great mystery and you know you know what what's really going on and what's the master plan because you know clearly there there is a a greater order to things beyond just the greed and whimsical desires and evil plans of the evil baby fuckers or whatever you want to call them. The, the Aussies call them rock spiders, but uh, mm -hmm. um, it is what it is. I mean, you know, still uh, waiting for that uh, Glenn Maxwell mugshot from the booking desk. At jail. <laughs> have, yeah. Haven't seen, seen that. One I, I guess that's buried underneath all the death shots of Osama bin Laden. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, her look at all the I, keywords out first thing. Get right? them all out there. <laughs> Epstein. Don't, Steve. Okay, excuse me. Steve. Paging. <laughs> Mr. <clears throat> yeah. Mossad. <clears throat> excuse me. Oh, stop. Hasbara just means explaining. Hasbara is explanation for the Goyim, you see. <laughs> it's you. explanation. That's why they have all those Hasbro trolls. Right. Because they just want to explain right. stuff. They want Yes. To <laughs> you just, just need want... help getting your mind right, my friend. That's exactly right. Yeah, Papa just said it's a G. It was a G5. Come on. So. Say, um, I have to say hi because earlier I heard your name and I came running and looking for you, Yona. He did. Oh, where's Yona? He's like a He's not over. He's, he's, in the, he's in the computer. He's like, mom. It's like that man is. Oh, wow. oh my god! He looks like he's like <laughs> typing on the computer from right here. Like he's got his little paws he's on. He's translating in Cherokee. I thought he was playing the polysorbate chord uh, keyboard there. <laughs> That's right. The eighty key keyboard, of course. He just showed you his entire keys. mouth. We didn't have room for eight more, so. Why? I post. I posted a meme about. Um, People can see Jesus in a dog's butt, but they can't see. Yeah, people can see Jesus in a dog's butthole, but they can't see like uh, corporate monopolies forming over the last 60 years. Right. So I posted this. Meme right. And, you know, you uh, find Jesus in toast. I, I saw Leo and I was just waiting for Leo to turn around just to see if I could check for Jesus back there. But it's OK, Leo. He's like, I opened. I saw Garcia. <laughs> and Nacho in his He's like, I opened my mouth for you, real wide. I, I, did you see him in there? Was what? he in there? Was it? Was it? Uh. Oh, where's Yona? He's like listening. It's, where's Yona? The wind is howling here. You, you want to hear Yona? Tonight. Yeah, Leo yeah. doesn't like normally run around and bark. Yeah, like he's I not like a regular time. little dog. But he heard your name, Yona, up. and yeah, he was running around barking. That is so cool. I was just going to say, by the time that gets up to you guys on the shoreline there, it's oh, yeah, to it's just here. be like frontline winds yeah. instead of like, you know, crazy psycho F5 tornadoes at four o'clock in the fucking morning in the middle of December. You know? Yeah, instead of that. <laughs> Fuck. So uh, the, the focus... I want to take it now because, you know, the first three rounds were basically, you know, where we began and the first contact mm -hmm. and how our language and our food and everything just kind of mixed together into what's considered American. Yet, you know, particularly like the burrito itself may have been invented in some kitchen somewhere, but like. The idea of wrapping, you know, pico de gallo, right, or and guacamole and some meat and wrapping it in a tortilla, 
that's that's a thing for a long time. Native American food. That's not yeah. Spanish food. Spanish food would be like paellas, right? Or tapas or shit like yeah, that. You tapas, know? Sure. It's not Italian food, right? We know Italian foods made by Chef Boyardee. They're like little spaghetti o rings. It all smells oh like vomit. God. <laughs> vaguely, vaguely like vomit. One Frank of my Girl favorite America. breads is uh, naan. You know, naan <laughs> that they make in India on uh -huh. the clay pots. Oh, my God. Sounds, so yeah. good. I love naan. And see, you the see Aztec, what I said? they have a thing that they grind their grain on called the matate, right? With the little, like, it's kind of like a big mortar pestle board type thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's a flat a board, stone. Right? Like, like a, a flat, flat stone, stone yeah, yeah, yeah. platform yeah. thing. And you can grind your masa up and then make your little wrap cakes and flatten them out. And That's got to be the same up. thing as busting up, making flour. Same kind of. Did you see what Popeye put up? Same thing. He put in the chat, my ex-wife is from a town in Philippines that had the Bleeding Eyes Mary statue. Wow. It was rain, water, and rust. It built their new downtown. <laughs> you got to love a good tourist that's trap. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, oh Jesus. Oh, my God. That, that's as awesome <laughs> as like a totally pimped out jeepney rolling down the middle of Manila with the shiny glitter and 20-inch rims. Oh, yeah. See, see, people. A lot of people don't realize the Philippines was a United States territory for over fifty years. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. why they got all those Willis Jeeps down there. But uh, the Philippines has turned the Willis Jeep into <laughs> the jeepney. Either you know, or you don't know. Oh, you don't. Did you see you what know. Charlie Brown said? <laughs> We're like gorilla streamers. He had to track us down. <laughs> We're trying to stay under the radar, Charlie. <laughs> well, so the, then, uh, the fourth round, uh, the fourth round, we basically were like talking about where we are today. Where are we at in this moment? You know, mm -hmm. and that was talking about the fear, hypnosis, the mass formation, the mass psychosis, the mining empire, the mining of us, and the poison that mining leaves behind, whether you're talking Alberta tar sand, Appalachian mountaintop removal or the mining of our, our hearts and minds because oh, fucking humanity, you know, propaganda is actually, or better yet, the modern term for propaganda narrative control is actually just a mining process and it's mining you of your own common sense. It's mining you of your own signals that you're receiving from your eyesight and your ears so that you don't hear an entire NASCAR stadium screaming behind the female tv reporter fuck joe biden right you're gonna play it off like <laughs> nobody can fucking hear that and you're you're gonna say i hear everybody behind me saying let's go brandon yeah that is you know? that is the thing just gonna gaslight to the max but but that's what it's about it is you know it's Forget a your natural connections to your own natural perceptions through your own natural senses. Just put on the new fucking goggles, man. Slump into the gamer chair yeah. and plug in. You know? Oh my gosh. Let me see yeah. if I can find something. And that's the quick. present. So now with episode five, because we're taking it from the Native American perspective. Oh yes, our dials go to eleven, like, like Spinal Tap, brother. <laughs> and and we can take it to the future. Is it louder? We can take to it 11, to the future because yeah. we prophecy like that, homie. All right, no, hang no on. It's coming around the bend. I, I got comforting. I got to share like a thirty second thing for you. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> you know, I got. I always got the things to queue up. <laughs> But is it louder? Well, it goes to 11, doesn't it? Ah. So these are some billboards created and brought to you by Americans in 2021. What's oh, this? No. A midget Stonehenge? <laughs> Making the Taliban great again. Yes. <laughs> these are classic. Is it loud? Can you hear it? I can hear it. Don't blame Trump. <laughs> I like the shits and giggles administration, the worst clown show in history. Yeah, that's the best line. That's the best meme, probably. I love this. For the love of God, please stop. He thinks his name is Brandon now. 
So his name is, um, I think it's John Talks. Let me see. I'll bring it up so you guys. Yeah, John Talks. Make sure that you guys <laughs> subscribe to him. He is awesome. He has a ton of like super short, like little clips that are, you know, that are absolutely hilarious. 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 All right. So yeah, I I had to I had to show you one of my one of my fun little things that I saw. I'm like, oh gosh. Right, let's not let's not uh, ruin the so continuity. Be serious. Oh no, I just there, there's just serious. there there is a method to the madness, you know. <laughs> yes. so, he brought it up. Let's organic. go, Brandon. I had let's to play. Go. Let's go, Brandon. Yeah, yeah. Because okay. that that perfectly ties in to where we're at and how we get to the future because we have to start disambiguating and differentiating between what we are sold as reality and what we know reality to actually be that's why for example the term hashtag fake news is an actual thing because fake news is an actual thing you know cue the meme where sinclair broadcasting group and others and it's yeah. you know they've got like 20 30 people in tiles all you know echo plexing regurgitating you know the the you know like the bill gates media sound chamber you yeah. know and and so yeah. we we're already to the point of you know for those that are not under complete for those that are not completely subdued by the fear hypnosis into the mass psychosis you know for for those that are able to still perceive with their natural senses and not reject what their natural senses tell them rather than being so hermetically sealed away from nature and climate and all mm -hmm. of its el elements yeah you know um so in that regard you know from my experiences with partying and going to raves and different social get-togethers and shin oh we don't do things like that <laughs> <laughs> often people would ask me about the rainbow prophecy and you know i would say well that that's actually a hopey prophecy but i mean we have a lot of similar prophecies to it but um i think due to different festivals like you know um you know i, I don't know like for example burning man and some of the other festivals in, in nevada mm -hmm. and, uh up on the salt flats above uh, utah there i mean there's a number of festivals and uh, where, where they do uh, ghost dance and sun dance and other um tribal traditions and and so i i think through that network and through you know deadheads and others that rainbow prophecy is kind of coming to the nomenclature and it's out there but I don't think most people have actually heard, you know, because it, it, to be specific, it's the Hopi tribe that's spelled H-O-P-I. And they're based uh, next to the Navajo, um, west of Taos, New Mexico, um, in the land of enchantment. Um, you know, you've got the Mesa Verde Cliff Palace and I all the Anasazi um stoneworks and everything mm -hmm. out there uh, anyhow uh, the rainbow prophecy that's often spoken of is in fact the rainbow prophecy of the hopi tribe and so you know i think it best rather than for me to try to piece together the different prophecies and how it's similar rather to focus on their specific interpretation of their own Hopi rainbow prophecy, which I mean, I've watched and listened to about 
seven healthy elders now and the videos are often labeled rainbow prophecy but they never really say any or mention rainbow so um i just want to kind of <laughs> caution anyone that's like got their whole care bear collection with them right now on the couch with them wait <laughs> for that rainbow wait moment. for that rainbow um just waiting baby just focus on the message okay because <laughs> the rainbow message is about all tribes coming together to you know purify and but anyways uh so you know it, it all comes from the same video um and i think the best way to uh to approach it is to take the first minute and 10 seconds the smaller we'll call twitter size clip or tiktok size clip right i don't know how long your clip can go on tiktok but i'm pretty sure that a minute and 10 seconds would fly but um is this minute, where we're supposed to be right here steve uh, i think it's a minute and 10 seconds one runs from 22 minutes to just a little past 23, I think like yep. 23, 10. Yeah. Um, okay, so I start this. And that's, where it, that's where he basically it drops it. This is the mic drop right here. And then after that, we can chew on a little bit and then take, take the whole thing in its context. Because, I mean, this is literally plucked out of the very middle of, you know, the basic. I mean, he's basically... What, what, what they have there is one of their sacred um, texts, right, with, with, their, with their sacred drawing on it. And, mm -hmm. and he explains how that it, that's basically a Hopi calendar that goes from the beginning of time to the future time, right? And you could always point to, well, right now we are here on this blanket, right? And then... You know, for the Iroquois tribes, they would have that described on a wampum belt made of the shells, right? And for us, we might have that described on a cave painting or on um, a buckskin, you know. Mm. Uh, but anyways, um, this the shorter clip really explains yeah, what so. is happening right now and what's about to happen in the next few weeks and months two in minutes, the immediate future. Uh, two and yeah, right. Two. Um, Wait, and, and it runs from 22 to about 2310. Um, and that's the really the, yeah. the key nugget to take away from the rainbow prophecy, what he describes here. And, and then okay. we can talk about that and then go to the longer clip and, Detail. So, without further uh, ado, the yeah, healthy I'm prophecy. I give an instruction. I go away for a while. I let you go on your way. Now, if some of you why is it may follow it, some of you may turn away. But after this purification, whoever this comes out, then I come and meet him again. Right, hang on one sec. I'm gonna be a long life again. We need. Doing everything, all I'm gonna, living people. I'm gonna let it just wait like a second to catch up a little bit so it doesn't lag so much on us. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Now, if hopefully some of you <laughs> may follow it, some of you may turn <laughs> away. But after this purification, whoever comes out, then I, I come and meet him again. And this time, this will be a long life again, renewing everything. All living people, no matter what race, will come together as one people, like it was to start from. There will be no more fighting over religion or or land will be open so that you will live out there without money system. You will not be required to pay taxes. You cannot uh, uh, grab everything uh, by somebody uh, like now you have a certain area for yourself and to let everybody uh, stay away. We deny one another everything. And we'd be like fruit trees out there who do things because each one of us has a gift to give freely. Now, after this occasion, if I invent something, 
you can take it and use it. And if you invent something, I can take it. I don't have to struggle to pay and pay to get it. It'll be free. So that's the way it's going to be from there on. And they may even speak one language. Again, but whose language is a question there? Is that because after the great spirit is with us, there will be a new life laid out by the purifier. Purifiers will cleanse his land. And whoever stood fast to the human, there may be one person remain up to this point. So that person's faith and courage, or those that come to help him to keep it, that that many people will be saved to come out and meet the great spirit. Or this great spirit, purifier, and the one that's kept the faith, will lay out a new plan for all the rest of the people that survive. From there on, there will be a peace, real peace, from there on. It's so. That's it. After many years that sounds good to me. Of, uh, knowledge along this yes, line. please. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Cut the film. Yep. So basically what he's saying is um, he's explaining on there that on the blanket, the line is read from the left to the right. And where he was pointing was the last time the line diverges. And there are two paths. And one line kind of looked like it was a squiggly following like a mountain jacket slope going up to the oblivion. And the other line dropped down and went straight across and had like corn plants and a happy little man and everything. Yeah. And Absolutely. he's like, you know, this is all the people that live uh, as one tribe of many colors in harmony with the great spirit. And so that's where you get you know, the transliteration of, you know, one tribe of many colors living as one with the great spirit as being the Hopi rainbow prophecy. That's where that comes from. Okay. That makes sense. And basically it would be akin to saying that like the Amish kept it real all this time. And you can either become Amish and live one with nature and off the land once again, or you can perish in the factories with the robots as you become one with the robot orifices. And eventually, you know, it's just like you're hoping that the guy in front of you is not eating the cuttlefish today. Right. That's amazing that Charlie Brown said that uh, they've taken the uh, these prophecies three times to the UN to to, to plead for the world to mm -hmm. warn everybody. I try to tell people. Yeah, man. People need to fucking know, man. They need to hear it. I needed to hear this. I need to know this. This and is so it's wild. This reaffirms stuff to me. I mean, dude, this video is from Mike. I want to say the early 60s, maybe even the late 50s. It's black and white. Yeah. Well, it could be all <laughs> the way up to the, to the middle of 60s, probably. But, I mean, it's like it, if you watch the beginning of it and you see the vehicles pulling in in the parking lot of this thing where they're talking, like, yeah, like this is – that's like the 50s I mean, or something. Because, like, there's somebody that has a, K a Kennedy sticker on their car. So, I mean, and Kennedy ran for president in against Richard Nixon in 1959. Yeah. Because he was inaugurated in 1960, right? Then November 63, we know what happened, right? Yep. But, so, I mean, that kind of dates that, you know, that this video we're watching, I mean, I, I should probably have gone in a little deeper to see, but I mean, just the simple fact of what he starts to talk about with, I mean, obviously at this that is, point, this is 1972 in the U.S. Okay. I'll show the screen so we can, at we don't UN. have to play it, but it, it has the information. Oh, oh a, a different presentation or, or this video, this one, the, this one where he's on, on his knees. This was at the U.N. This one right here. Yeah. Do you see? Yeah. Yeah. With, see with, right. with with Thomas uh, Banyakia. 
Yes, this one right here, it says this was 1972, the UN okay. uh, Conference of the Human Environment, Stockholm, Sweden. Just that way we can see, you know, where, oh, you couldn't see it, that's why. He gives the entire <laughs> speech on his knees. Wow. I don't know if you can notice that, like, what, what the whole time he keeps turning and pointing back to the, to the banner and, ex and basically reading it and explaining it. Oh, he's wow. on his knees. I didn't even know he was on his knees. Um, but see. nevertheless, at the, you know, when you go to the, yeah, I, I think it was yeah. around 18 minutes and 42 seconds is where I, where I, I try to pick up because, uh, you know, prior to that he, he's covering their, their ancient history, which you want me to play heard. from 1842 yes I, I, if, if this is cute if this is where i remember correctly this is where he starts to get into he's already talked about the um i think he's already mentioned the gourd of ash uh and he begins to talk about how the last thing that happens before the formation of the rainbow tribe is when uh they start making people in test tubes yeah we're in that fucking like, era deep in that era now and yeah i'm like you know like the whole test tube babies and human animal hybrids and stuff like that i mean you know if you take me back two three years ago that was still beyond my comfort zone you know there's mm -hmm. just a little bit too bad shit for me yeah and now after you know being blackpilled by like david martin and introduced to all these fucking patents that are already yeah registered with the u.s patent and trademark office <laughs> That was my whole. There's argument. like, okay, <laughs> now there's receipts. Oh, uh, well, you yeah. Know, I mean, you know, there weren't receipts to Bat Boy in the National Enquirer. There are receipts to this shit, so it's yeah. not that shit. So no, I it's mean. it's real. <laughs> it's real. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, like Bella just said. That's way scarier than Bat Boy. Yeah. <laughs> she said, "Can't we ever learn from past mistakes?" <laughs> God, I wish, I wish. Uh, Never again the sequel. The sequel's always worse than the first. Always. Oh, man. You know, I, I thought something earlier that, like, you know, like, as you bring this prophecy and how they're, you know, like, we're talking about becoming, like, robotic and computerized. I'm like, so all this AI shit, like, who determines the morals of an AI? Because my morals are not the same as somebody else's necessarily. So who gets to decide what is moral and what isn't when we can't even decide on basic shit? Well, you see, the thing <laughs> is, the way I see the, you know, what I'm going to characterize as the divergence and you know, the divergence has really been forced, foisted upon us, you know, with, with the dispersal and now um, distribution of um, what I would characterize as bioweapons, it's my opinion. Um, and as we see this rolling out, this, this divergence, this hard forcing of a disambiguation of the population, the separation and classification of the population. You know, it's one of the really classic hallmarks of a genocide in progress. I mean, for example, classification and separation would be putting all the Jews in the ghetto and making them wear yellow stars. I mean, that's a academic textbook description of, of what we're talking about here as, as a specific example. And in this guard, in this regard of today's context, we're talking about, um, you know, HR 550, the U.S. law for the United States National Vaccine Database and Track and Trace, and 
being able to identify and match every single United States social security number to your vaccination status and have that, you know, paired with the chip that's in the new federal ID that's issued for a driver's license that most states have already converted to. I think all must must comply at this point, although there were a number of states that had held out on compliance. Um, that's just the reality, more of this convergence of identity. You hear about that from the World Economic Forum. But um, again, this divergence that I speak about, their, their divergence has been along lines of basically who, you know, the easiest to do um, and from their perspective, the easiest to force. And, you know, most Americans are already living paycheck to paycheck and desperate to keep a job, even if it means sacrificing your health for an experiment. As yet ongoing, as yet not complete. Experimental safety trials. It's the greatest medical experimentation in human history. Yeah, ever. But nevertheless, mm. we're at this divergence where, for better or for worse, we're being divided upon lines of vaxxed and unvaxxed, uh, given the funding stream for this new national vaccine database. But the divergence in some ways lines up with that because you know at this point you're either going to become fully connected to the unnatural <coughs> or in order to survive you will have to reconnect and fully connect with the natural you see those are the two paths right it's very simple and it, it's not to say that you can't have technology it's not to say that you're forsaking technology you know it's when technology is a tool of those connected to nature it can serve man and nature but only in that regard in my opinion otherwise technology is not neutral and technology will only further and further and further and further disconnect you from the natural until it's so unnatural and you're so completely disconnected that you're within a system of death and there can be no reverence or intrinsic value to anything of life in a system of death and so, you know, this system of death is now in the process of consuming itself. This is insane. <laughs> but, you know, it's a likely conclusion. It's, it's merely logical. You know, it's like the snake eating its own tail. And, and the sad, uh, for me, the blackest pill to swallow is having to acknowledge that, you know, as much as I want to believe that absolutely everyone has, you know, like in the cartoons, you know, a little angel on one shoulder and a little devil on the other shoulder and that everyone has a conscience and everyone has better angels and everyone has some type of moral or ethic, no matter how evil or fucked up and, you know, well, I guess you just haven't been around enough evil people to realize that there are truly, truly evil people out there. And, I'm, you know, it's something I think that deep thinking and deep feeling people, you know, are always cautious to steer away from. And, and for good reason to, to label and say things as evil seems like superstitious or something. But I mean, it's fucking evil. No, it is. Yeah, I agree with it what you're saying. It is plain and fucking evil once you once you get over that hurdle. Realize, you know, you're not dealing, it's not just simply a cacistocracy. It's not just simply ruled by the inept and the 
and the corrupt. This is just not happenstance um, fuck ups and, you know, negligence or incompetence. This is premeditated. Yeah, it's fucking diabolical. Malicious. I mean, there's a reason why the term pandemic is so often bandied about in lieu yeah. of pandemic. And again, two and a half years ago, I would have said that, um, you know, that's a bit far fetched. I'm going to need to see evidence. Well, Q. David Martin and the patents. Oh, uh, no. no. <laughs> Yeah, it's like Steve Poikin and with the mackerel slaps to the face. Exactly. You know, it's, there's the fucking receipts, man. I mean, here's your sign. I mean, these are like public records. You don't even have to file a Freedom of Information Act request. You just go to the building and get the fucking copy. Or you get, half time, you know, you have to go to the building now. You know, we're living in the future times on the interwebs. Just download that shit. Go to the fucking website. Boom. You want a PDF? There you go. Read it. Wait. And, and, you know, again. So this is Stockholm, Sweden, 1972. Yep. And he's, when he talks about, okay, now that we're together as a tribe of many colors, what we'll call the rainbow tribe, right? Living in the future time. And, Yona has an invention. Lucky says, you know, I want to use Yona's invention. <clears throat> well, you can. Anything I invent, you can use. Anything you invent, I can use. What he's talking about is, you know, fuck your intellectual property laws. Right. See, all that shit he talks about. Boom, we're right here. It's right here, right now. And, and the intellectual property debates come up in the whole vaccine distribution here in the of last course. few months. I mean, it, it's it, everything he's it's, it's right. Um, it's right on the pulse. I mean, it's right on the moment. It's right on the nose. That's fucking wild. You don't have an avatar. You know that, right? I know. I'm trying to put one on there, but I just can't get it to work. And so <clears throat> to me, to break the fear hypnosis and the mass psychosis to help people see the two paths because again you're not trying to grab anyone by the hair of their head Steve or Lucky or anybody else you're not trying Good to look. grab people by the hair of their head or any hair that you can grab wherever you're going to grab their hair and just drag them down the right path because they'll be bound. Just like, just like they couldn't do it to, to us. Way to the other path. You know, just Before like we drag. wouldn't allow that. Yeah. You know, yeah. same thing. Like I wouldn't be like, oh yeah, just you know. And they're not just gonna, like they're not gonna let us do that effect. either. Right. The more you drag someone down a path they don't want to go, the more they get a stray sand effect of. Man, I must really be missing out on something on that other path. Mm -hmm. That other path that leads straight off a fucking cliff. But because they don't see why that what well, you're you're not doing them any favors taking them down the right path. Right? Exactly. And it makes no sense to you, and it makes no sense to them. And so are the, the way you do it is to show them the fork in the road to let people know this is the moment we're here and we're at the fork in the road and here it is and if you go left this is where it's going to go and if you go right, this is where it leads. We're heading off and, you know, you can choose accordingly which way you want to go. But 
I've let you know where both paths go. And so now you can choose accordingly. <coughs> and that's where we're at. No, that's not what I wanted to do. Sorry. <laughs> and so what we're talking about I'm going to talk about a different prophecy um, that was talked about by uh, Tenskwatawa. He was uh, brother of Tecumseh. He's a great Shawnee warrior. He is known as the prophet. And he talked about how... I will be like right back. I don't want to interrupt you. I'll just be right Oh, back. no problem. He talked about how there would be two clouds. And... Everyone would be enchanted and feeding their energy into one cloud. Whereas the other people would be shielded from the blistering sun by the other cloud. And when all the people were fully enchanted by the one cloud, it came down and... I mean, just one by one, just one calamity after another happens to them underneath this cloud. And it literally makes me think of, because again, he's talking about the end when the people are trying to figure out which way to go. And they either follow this one cloud or they follow this other cloud as of traveling through the sky. And I think about it and I mean, literally meta, Zoom, all these other things is literally cloud computing. Data cloud, cloud mining. High cloud, man. I mean, absolutely. And and you know, I mean, basically the the Wachowski brothers and the whole Matrix trilogy is about being connected to this cloud, this mm -hmm. virtual perception of reality. And so you know, that's something that we were kind of chipping away at um, the other day. Uh, yeah. With. Um, that, that Lucky and I were breaking down the fact of this false nomenclature of first world, third world, which, which is a particular construct of American propaganda. Mm -hmm. Yep. Of the of the arrogance and the conceit, uh, and, and it's really part of the grand gaslighting that's used against Americans to think that this is the first world. But uh, you'd be hard pressed to go across most countries and find worse worse living conditions and find worse dilapidation and crime than i mean i don't want to start naming out cities all across the united states because i mean every single state suffice it to say they crime. all they all could meet those requirements Virtually any easy city any of one. more than five thousand people is going to have a trailer park or ghetto, or meth row, or yep. crack row, or junkie row, or heroin hole, or, or all of them row, all together, or yeah. block after block of bandos, or bulldoze down blocks, and just like, I mean, it's all across the country, just this rot. Yeah. The infrastructure is just falling apart, man. It's just been completely abandoned and neglected because, you know, as communities and labor pools have been mined out of all their wealth, there is truly no reclamation process. Now, there's an official mine reclamation process, just like there's official economic development cabinets as you know in my professional life working in land surveying and civil engineering you know i've had a lot of interface with um, local economic development boards industrial boards um planning and zoning ordinances and planning and zoning commissions and taking different development plans to the local town fathers and begging for forgiveness and and seeing the, the prostration and the fellation of out of state and out of country corporations and all the tax write-offs and giveaways and 
um, packages, you know, that, that, that are offered to try to allure, to try to land these jobs. They've got to have all these incentives that they're going to offer and tax rebates. And, 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 and that is what you don't understand is those programs are coming in on the heels of the major factories and the major town employers leaving. Yeah. And in their wake, the U.S. federal government through the Department of Labor is then sent in the Department of Commerce, since funneling this money through the state and local governments, county governments, municipal governments. And then they then turn around and whore and pimp out the town water and gas and everything. Like, like New London, Connecticut with Kilo versus Connecticut on behalf of Hewlett Packard, right? Mm -hmm. Famous Supreme Court ruling. And we we see this repeating and repeating and repeating. Yeah, like Michael the, the, Moore. The Michael Moore no tried to show us this with Roger and me. Like, you know what I mean? From the start, like years ago. Like it's like it's going on 20 years now. Like when he was actually a relevant person, you know what I mean? Making important documentaries. Roger and me and and just the whole Flint, Michigan thing, you know what I mean? Like what the fuck that was that was like everybody's sign right there that all of these things are taking place across everybody's fucking communities and this is the reality but like you see, somehow that's the thing. you go to the, the, the bad part of that. new haven connecticut the bad part of new haven connecticut i guess i would say the good part of camden <laughs> but you Even know what's the messed good up part of camden and realize you're seeing the same thing that they're seeing in Alberta, Canada, that they're seeing in Appalachian strip mines. Yeah. It, instead of seeing huge pits of ore tailings and everything else, you're seeing block after block after block of all these, you know, buildings, some of them brownstones and everything. Yeah, dilapidated. You know, the fucking dicks oh, spray painted on them and fucking, yeah. you know, it's just fucking trashed. But the thing is, is that also it, it's pretty crazy because it's always looked down upon like the poor or the ones that, you know what I mean? They have all the drugs. They're dealing the drugs. Well, you know what? It's not the poor only buying those freaking drugs. Well, the, whole the, the, the rich are coming in and buying those drugs. They're not exempt from that, but yet they benefit from the backs of the poor people that, you know what I mean? The ones that are doing it as a survival mode because it is like one of the few choices that you have, you know what I mean? Like you're not given a lot of choices <laughs> and a lot of people turn to selling things or doing illegal things yeah. because it's out of, you know, like the larger picture of it is because you can't, you know what I mean? You can't afford to live. You can't afford to get a job and live off of it. So it's, it's like, it's by design. And then it, it's, it's, so then we can, you know, the people that don't make as much or don't have enough income to be considered, you know, viable within our society. Yeah, we are the ones that end up like taking, you know, taking the brunt of everything as if we're doing something wrong it's or we're lazy damage. because oh, we course. can't like, like pull up our boots, bootstraps, which is a joke. You know what I mean? It's, it's just, it's the most ridiculous thing that it, the bigger picture of it, it just always comes back to the same thing. I mean, there's always been a, like a level of tribalism, right? Like where there's always like a cheap and then there's the people, you know what I mean? There's like more of the worker bees and I get that. But at the same time, when you lived in a tribe like that, you typically had, you know, a, a roof over your head and you had food and you had a medicine woman to go to. You know what I mean? So for the things that you contribute to your community, you are giving back things to your community. Like, you know what I mean? Well, there's a playbook that they're playing from. And there are clear patterns to be to be taken from here. And so that's why I draw the parallel between, again, to pick on Camden or Detroit, even though I said I didn't want to pick on cities. But I mean, it's all across the, the U.S. states and across the U.S. territories. Yeah. You can see the stark, stark contrast between the little gated pockets of Richistan that are wholly located within, inside of Merca. Yep. 
Yeah, that I drives me that's, crazy. That's and, the thing. And like, so that's why, you know, the, the first world, third world thing is a false dichotomy because, you know, you can go to parts of, you know, Greenwich, Connecticut mm -hmm. or White Plains, Connecticut, and, you know, you're in fucking Richestan. I mean, you know, you hedge fund. And I can I mean, drive 20 minutes right. and I'm in a rich ass area yeah. or I can, you know what I mean? Like, or I can or go right down the, the road off the Bronx freeway and yeah. God damn, how do I get back on the 95? Oh fuck. Yeah. <laughs> you want to make sure you have gas before you go into certain areas of New York <laughs> or Connecticut. You, or, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I want to make sure I have enough gas so that I don't have to stop in certain areas. I didn't bring my trainer's whip for the Bronx Sioux today. I need to go back home <laughs> first. <laughs> that whole idea of, uh, of like, you know, uh, corporations just pulling out and then leaving the community to, you know, just like all these businesses and all these mom and pop places that got crushed when those manufacturers moved away and those places didn't stay there. So now there is no fucking infrastructure for a community to have anything. So and what does so it do? It's going to implode. It's going to implode on itself and everybody's going to do drugs and it's going to be crime and it's going to be fucked up because what the fuck else is there? You but know, you it's collateral it's damage design. from that original move, you know? Check this out. You can <clears> see <throat> exactly the same thing happen. Whether you want to look at the coal mining communities here in Appalachia and West Virginia and Eastern Kentucky and, and, the, and the old iron ore mining communities here in, in yeah. Southern Ohio, where Henry Ford had his railroad from iron to Ohio, direct to Detroit. Uh, he owned the railroad, yeah. he owned the iron ore, he owned the car factory, he owned every step of the manufacturing process. I guess it doesn't matter about what, what manufacturing it is. It's, it's just like whatever the industry, if that's the main thing, you know, supplying the economic drive of a place, you know what I mean? And they all fucking move away. Your shit's going to collapse, you know? Well, it's so, mining well, It's mining and rape of all of it's us. It's going to decline. You so know? whether it, you're in a rural setting in the middle of nowhere, in a in a company town built by the logging and timber company or you're in a a, a coal camp in Muhlenberg, uh at say like paradise kentucky where mr peabody's coal train mm -hmm. hauled it away or you're at a camden uh major munitions uh plant right a lot of munitions factories were in new jersey St mm -hmm. there still are some weapons and Make a lot of weapons. There. We have them here. Uh, we have we have weapons and and they make the military uh, subs and everything. I mean, you know, somebody's got to make all those bombs. We got to make nuclear drop, submarines. Right? We can't let Rona Groton, make them all. Groton, you know, you know, Groton, Groton, uh, is it Groton? Connecticut? Yeah, Groton sub base. Yep. Yeah, Groton sub base. So I mean, yep. um, And what has happened is, as these communities have been completely abandoned you know like in the case of a, of a coal town you know the coal company pulls out water system goes to shit railroad tracks are pulled out bus service is stopped it becomes so isolated it's hard to get there mm -hmm. say and you know the stores close you got to drive further and further and further to get groceries okay that's in Appalachia. All right, now let's go to some of these neighborhoods in Trenton or Camden or New Haven, Connecticut. You know, pick your megalopolis, okay? Right. Mm -hmm. And there are, again, these cancerous areas on the map that are just like, well, they call them food deserts. I mean, unless yeah. you're going to a bodega and getting junk food, I mean, you that's know, all you, they sell. You Everything know, is go to the grocery store, you got to hit the beltway and go out to the burbs. But you know what? Or whatever, you know. When mm -hmm. I was a kid, though, I remember in like, you know, the, the 80s and into the 90s going to Trenton. My grandparents lived on Brown Street. They had one of those beautiful three story brownstone homes there mm -hmm. and like, you know, the like nice little side yard. And we used to go there and they had their garden and we would walk to the butcher and we would walk to, you know what I mean? To the deli and we would walk to the bakery and it, it was like, it was like going back in time and it was so cool. And then my, 
uh, my stepdad's like grandparents, uh, they used to have a bakery right there in Trenton. It was called the Sabo's Bakery. And like, so like, there's all this like beautiful history and then it, and you know, this beauty in it. And then you caught the end of a fucking dying era. Yeah. But like, I mean, like, I remember walking, going to get the roast and then we would bring it home and we would get the vegetables from the garden. And you know I mean? That was like a Sunday meal thing. It was like this beautiful, like, you know, like neighbors used to be neighbors and then it just got destroyed. We have to think of our communities like forests, like trees. Okay. And, And I've explained before that, Every living tree is, in fact, an entire community with all types of different species, plant species, medicines, birds, squirrels, you name it, all rely relying upon that tree. The mistletoe hanging from the oak tree branches, right? The moss growing on the bark of the tree. There's all these different circles of life that intertwine with each like and every tree. And think of every single community in the same way where you have the bakery and the butcher shop, right? These aren't just individual businesses. These aren't just individual trees, individual customers that all can all just be folded into the new mm-hmm. superstore Walmart or the nor or the new super Meyer, because it's gonna have a bakery and a butchery and everything else inside mm-hmm. that store, just like You'll have all the same board feet that 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 forest had at the local Lowe's, all cut up nice for you into six by nines or two by fours, whatever length you need. Okay, the same thing. I already explained that we're not a democracy or a republic. We're a mining empire. They came to mine for gold, to mine for silver, to mine for iron ore, to mine for petroleum, to mine for coal, to mine for cheaper pools of labor. They're still all over the world mining for cheaper pools of labor. Can we get these soda can we get these sweaters sewn in Dhaka, Bangladesh? They'll pay even cheaper, right? Um you know, and so we're having like, you know, what is it, the the shirt uh what's it called? The the shirt coat, waistcoat factory or triangle the triangle shirt coat yeah. factory disaster in New York City. Yes, you know, those are happening all the time overseas now. Seventh like, Avenue. Like, uh, and like in Dhaka, Bangladesh, where they had the the textile worker plant that was like four stories uh, caught fire or collapsed or something. But the, in this in this case, their their doors were locked and they cooked inside. Yeah. So you know, we're seeing this extraction process where where communities are built, whether in the rural setting or in the urban setting. And they build up their own sovereignty, right? To where to where they have their own source of butchery, their own source of bakery, you know, their own mm-hmm. sovereign communities, but like like Trenton, Brown Street, you're describing, maybe like Kensington, you were describing under the elevated train, the mm-hmm. four steep, you know, vibrant, living, sovereign communities, self-sufficient in many regards. And instead, when the employers pull out. You have the the official mining reclamation process, which is in fact yet in and in it, it instead of reclaiming the land and, and and reinvesting in the community, which is what these economic development boards are, are ostensibly for. Right. In fact, it's an intensification of the extraction process as more and more of the commons are privatized and so now we've gotten to the point that government as we know it which is really corporations regulating the government so they can regulate us boeing regulating the faa so the faa can regulate airline passengers Mm -hmm. you know pfizer regulating the fda so the fda can regulate americans that's the way it works so now when i have the conversations about the commons like you know Everyone in town should equally own the water tower. It should be public property. The water tower shouldn't belong to some king that lives three oceans away. You know, that's fucking right. retarded. But that's the case in many communities where the water systems have been privatized. And so mm-hmm. when I say, you know, the commons should be owned commonly by the public at large, 
No, 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 no. I don't want this. I don't want we need that public-private partnership. If the way it is today, where the government is Nestle, then yeah, I don't want Nestle owning the fucking water tower because exactly. Nestle owns the government. So it, it's becoming it's insane. philosophical discussion. And, and I don't think people are yet still seeing our democracy and our voting system in this esoteric, abstract sense that they really should. Yeah. That when you talk about this American democracy, I mean, you might as well be talking about My Little Pony type shit. Yeah, it's 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 uh, it's simplistic to to lay it out in those lines, like the propaganda lines. We don't live in that world. <laughs> no, the propaganda lines that they that they paint on the fucking pavement in front of you say, "Go this way, go that way." All of that is just as two dimensional as it fucking comes, right? So if you can see in three dimensions. You can you can see like oh well all of this all of this is this is the end result of all of these pieces being put together in this way mm -hmm. to extract the most from all of the people all of the time like that's now that's we've known about this fork in the road for a long time many people have already come to this fork in the road in the path of their lives these oh. paths already have names for them. We know what they are. <clears throat> the path that leads to burnout, the path that eats you up, spits you out, and throws you away. It's called the fucking rat race. Jump on that treadmill. Get in that fucking hamster wheel. Run wheel. until your legs fall off. You ain't getting nowhere, man. That's the what? fucking rat race. We all know what that path is and where it leads. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it also makes it so much harder on the people that are still trying to maintain those like smaller businesses and like not let capitalism swallow you up. And like I try I make stuff and like I need to get more of it out there. But like for me, it's such a hard thing for me to like to to put a, a, a value on something that I make in comparison to how they sell it. Uh, for so cheap, like, like, it's like I can make something that's way better quality, but you can go to Walmart and buy it for 15 bucks. And, but it wasn't made by somebody, you know what I mean? That, you know, and it wasn't made in a, like in a quality way. And then like, you know, to even be able to get things at a price where you can, you know, then, you know, create it. And then, you know what I mean? Be able to resell it, to make something off of it. It's like they, they squash everybody in every turn so it's like even if you are somebody that is a lower economic status to try to get any you know what i mean any kind of like grip on going up it's like i don't want to be part of the capitalist system i don't want to be part of that system and i try to barter as much as i can but there's only so much that you can barter without needing a note to buy the things so you can barter a lot of times you know like i can't I don't, I don't have a local person that has fuzzy, funky fabrics, like when I want to go make something, right? So, like, it's like I try to go to a local business that buys them, like, in bulk and resells them, you know, but they're still getting it from that same system. So, it's really hard, like, like to make those choices and decide where I'm going to get them from, you know? Like, I try to get as much as I can from smaller businesses and... In, in supporting smaller businesses, sometimes they're having to support the larger corporations that we're trying to be away from. So it's really, really hard. They kind of get you, you know what I mean? Like they, they get you no matter which way you come at it. And it's so hard for me to like, you know, price things in a way where, you know, it, it is, you know, it, it's worth my time to do it. And then where it's it will be affordable, you know. It's really incredible, Lucky, if you think about it. People, a lot of people in this country scramble around to collect whatever pebbles and nuggets of coal that they can, and they all go and take whatever coal they found and give it to the Walmart mine. I mean, think about Walmart says every single person in town collecting whatever coal they've managed to mine, whatever money they've managed to make from a meager pittance of a wage and pile their coal into their shopping carts or buggies, as we call them around here, 
-hmm. and they're all pushing their coal into the Walmart so it can be dumped into the registers and put into the coal yeah. train waiting out back. It, it, it's, uh, I'm trying to draw the analogy. Yeah. We live yeah. in a mining society. Walmart yeah. is mining you of your money. You mm -hmm. don't have to buy the $2 underwear. And really, right. really, really, on really top of it, <laughs> on top of it, what's crazy is that, so Walmart doesn't, they make all the money. They don't pay you enough so that you, you know, a lot of people have to, you know, have to get SNAP benefits or, you know, some states that, that do Subsidized offer medical. So, Subsidized or, or your housing, you know what I mean? Like, so you have to get all these subsidies to make, you know what I mean? To make that. And so not only are we like subsidizing Walmart for the pay that they don't get the people, where do you think people are going to shop? You know what I mean? With that stuff, if well, you work at if Walmart you're and rural... you're getting food stamps, then where are you going to shop? Especially if you're in a food desert, you're probably going to shop and get your, use your 10% off well, and really go strange. shop at Walmart. And so it's just like, but people don't even think about it. like they're like oh yeah they get snap and then we pay for that or da 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 da, da whatever but it's like it, the larger picture of it is though is that it even cycles back to them in like what you spend like you work for your paycheck people say that all the time like you you spend your paycheck at your job and it's so much easier because you're like constantly seeing these things you know what i mean like when you work there, you see all the new product and all the new desire and the new demand and, oh, whoa, you know, it's fancy over here. And so you buy those products so, so again, and they're it, shit. It, and it's it just an issue of perception because mm -hmm. the perception is, you know, I'm working myself to death. My back's against the wall. I'm pinching pennies. I'm cutting coupons. I don't have any other options. I, I mean, where else can I go besides Dollar Tree and Walmart? That's the perception, right? That is the perception. I mean, what else can I do but take this coal to the Walmart? They won't accept anything else. Well, you know, maybe gather berries instead. And there you cut out the middleman and you didn't have to trade for the coal, for the this to the that to go here and there and then to get the berries. But the point being, we know that people have come to this point in the path before, right? The rat race is leaving me empty, mm -hmm. right? And whereas the other path is, is, you know, maybe I got to take DMT or ayahuasca or LSD or shrooms or have some type of religious experience or get born again, or, you know, mm -hmm. buy a blue book and get all the poker chips and key fobs and do the full 12 steps. I mean, whatever, you know, you get in touch with your higher power. You're, 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 you're trying to fill this hole, seeking fulfillment. Fuck the rat race. I'm taking the other path, right? So again, the, these paths have been labeled. That the Hopi, Go to a lodge. That, that, that Hopi medicine man is talking about, you know, get, mm -hmm. get connected back to the natural world. Do a yep. sweat lodge, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, yep. Go do a lodge. Right, get your heart right. Get your spirit right. Get your soul right. Get your body right. You know, purify and then renew. That's what so, he's talking about here, the purification process and the renewal process. So how do you tie that into your everyday life? You know, how do you make it real for people? And, and that's where you have to realize, number one, the first thing you have to do is reclaim your time. Realize, first and foremost, the single most precious, precious sense that you had more than the sense of love, more than the sense of taste, touch, and anything else is the sense of time. And well, until you take back your time, until you acknowledge that your time is so valuable, it's more valuable than money until it's like the first epiphany, the first truth. You have to realize that your own time has an intrinsic value. And you have to reclaim your time and take start taking your time back in order to extricate yourself from yep. the feedback loop of not only being mined out, but then you find yourself in your relationships with other people, mining well, other people out. We, and then everyone's mining each other and 
and, 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 and you just keep leaving behind more and more poison, more and more that. resentment, more and more fears and doubts and uncertainties. And it's a feedback loop of destruction. This is the capitalism. This is the rat race burnout that we're talking about, right? Yeah, but there's also the larger picture of that, too. And I think that part of that is that people don't know, like, where to go with this stuff. And I think that's why what we're doing is really important, because we're showing people, like, this is the larger view of it. But then also, we need to be able to teach each other, like, where to go find those berries, where to go find those things. And, like, I feel like what we're doing here is we're having, like, not only fearlessly authentic conversation about it, but we're we're doing mutual aid as in, like, all right, well, these are the problems, but this is how we're going to aid each other wherever we are. And we're going to teach each other, all right, well, let's do this. And, and when you have other people to relate to and you're not like, okay, let me just go watch a YouTube video and see if I know where to go find these berries, you know, like you have a community that's going to tell you like, yeah, let's encourage this. Let's, you know, let's figure this out together. And you have that support of doing those mutual aid things and the things that other people might not think of, oh yeah, I should go do that. You know, because if it's not in, you know, if you're programmed to think a different way and, and consume, consume in that way, the only way we're going to break that cycle is by having these conversations exactly like, like we are. And I think that that's why this is so important is because so we're is breaking that capitalism style. This is what divides the two paths. And what divides the two paths, what you truly must decide in order to freely take steps down one path or the other is what is your greatest fear? You see, what is your greatest fear? And for those that stay in the rat race, for those that just take the, you know, well, I'll go ahead and take the booster because I mean, I'm up for a promotion I'm, for whatever reason. Whatever the rationale, I'm just following orders, man. You know, look, I mean, I know the remdesivir is kind of sketchy and everybody I've given it to has died. But I mean, that's no reason to not give it. I'm just following orders, man. Don't be mad at me. You know, yeah. and and so what do they fear? They, they, they fear losing their connection to the rat race and all the wonderful things. I'm not going to go live out in the wild like Bear Grylls and screw that. I don't want to go back to the Stone Age. It's fear. I'm not advocating for a Luddite paradise where we go live in the guy in a jungle and drink cyanide right. Kool-Aid together. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm not saying forsake all intellectual property, forsake all technology. It, <laughs> it's it's what you're connected to and how you use it. Right, because because even a hammer can be a lethal instrument if it's if it's used to hit people in the head rather than beat nails into wooden boards, you know. Yeah. So the you know the what divides is what is your greatest fear, and so to me this is the key, and I hope this is the breakthrough in the fifth round of Yona, and how to get into the future time, how to see the fork in the path. And not just run past it while you've got this emptiness in your heart. You're like, you know, mm -hmm. no matter what I do, no matter how hard I work, no matter how much money I make, no matter all these career advancements and all these awards and trophies, I just have a hole in my soul. I yeah, they're going to keep you warm at night. Feel, they're going to fill your soul. Yeah. like <laughs> Right. And, and that's what leads, leads the hedge funders into the Amazon to drink ayahuasca. Mm -hmm. Right. That's what leads me. expats to take a jog outside the country and try to make sense of it. And they just can't wrap their head around it. And so what is it? What is it that leads down that other path? And, and what it is, is when you realize that the power is in you. Mm -hmm. And that the only thing to fear, the only thing to fear is nature itself. Nature is the greatest power, not man. Man is subservient to nature. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Middle East tribe, Holy Bible says, 
man was given dominion yeah. over all nature. And the arrogance begins with that. No, 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 no. Yeah. We were not given dominion over nature. Nature has dominion over us. We do not own the earth. The tornadoes earth. yesterday called, showed yeah, us, us that, right? Last night, Sadly, it takes, demonstrated. It takes catastrophic shows of force by nature to momentarily humiliate and humble man so much that he might just maybe question just for a fleeting moment all the bullshit he's been told his whole life mm. about how man is greater than nature and man can control nature and man can pack we are nature, nature. And we are nature. You, you can get so rich just grifting the right angle of nature and grift, 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 whether it's grifting at the COP26, selling carbon credits, grifting, you know, that you need to sell, I don't know, ass pipes for cows so you can connect all the uh, cow rectums to a methane. Yeah, we're going to need one system. of those. I mean, you know, it's just cow rectum connectors. And meanwhile, there are methane clath Correct. rates that are thawing out. You know, the earth is responding. But it's well, always framed be. in the context of we have the technology and we have the money and, and we can just fix it with technology. I have a question about the, yeah. about the Hopi, uh, the Hopi um, <coughs> medicine man, uh, the, the elder that was telling the thing. He said at one point there would be uh, there was there was uh, ash that fell from the sky and then mm -hmm. it started over. Like everything was new again. Like, what is that? You know, like, is that is that the volcanoes popping off, or well, you know, is it the asteroid the, hitting? Or? <laughs> he talks about the gourd of ash and how they have the great bombs, and that there would be pestilence and sickness, and people would be thinned out, and they'd be making people in test tubes, and and then it gets pretty dark because he talks about. The people that come from where the sun rises every day, the people that come from the east, mm -hmm. and then they come upon the east coast of the United States, and they start purifying the land, and the people that were poisoning the land are um, dispatched of, and they were very nice to everyone else and even people who had a change of heart and wanted to help purify the land or something to that effect. But then coming from the West where the sun sets every day came another people who were not as kind and brutal that they were brutal and they came upon the West coast. And eventually the people from the East and the people from the West met up in the middle of the United States and uh, the poisoners all had their heads cut off. And I'm just like that. I think that's like around, sound. it's around 26 to 28 minutes, that part. But, um, you know, pretty, pretty frightening. Cause I was just like, when he's talking about like that, I'm like, what is that? Yeah, I, I listened to a bunch of that earlier. Sure. When you, when you said like, it. Oh, would it be the Chinese? Or... It's pretty intense. There was. I, some... I mean, basically, my my thought was what he was alluding to was that he's talking about the fall of the American Empire and basically a Balkanization, and that the that the United States would be split up into four different countries, and so again two, three years ago, hearing that prophecy that I just kind of, you know, I don't know. You know, it's just ramblings of the elders from many years I ago. Of, it seems far-fetched. I can't see the USA going the way of the USSR or Yugoslavia. I just don't see it. Okay. After the two years have played out now, I look at where we're at today. Yeah. Could we go the way of Serbia and Croatia and Bosnia and Kosovo? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. How about how about this for an idea? Hasn't everything 
fundamentally fucking changed post 9 11 mm. when the ash fell from the sky mm. like you know it's arguable that everything has changed exponentially from that point yeah he said he said now. the gray ash fell from the sky and covered everyone head to toe yeah. i think it's going to be more not, than that if that's not 911 that just i mean i, mean, I got I chills when i heard him say that people thinking walking that was, around and they yes. they look like gray smurfs Yes, where they've just been covered in the dust clouds that rain that that just whooshed through the streets. When, these when I saw him say that, I just down. immediately thought of that. I was like, "Wow, that reminds me of like you know the nine eleven, the the folks on the street after the buildings fell." And yeah, see, but this is what I think. It's ash. it's also burning, like everything burning, all the fires oh, yeah, that we've that had too. everywhere. That sure. seems more to me like what it is, is because there's ashes burning everywhere. It's, just it's not of, just of people covered in ashes. What I think. Uh, I know, but I think it's going to get worse. I don't think that that's it. I think we're going to have like fires with the fire tornadoes, and it's going to spread ash and and fire everywhere. I see. I foresee, like I've had I've had uh, you know visions of things coming since you know my whole entire life. I saw I had a nightmare about nine eleven happening a week before, and then and I thought, oh no no no, it's just because I'm flying cross country in a couple days. Yeah, I flew on like the ninth to the West Coast from from freaking from I don't remember if it was uh, Rhode I think it might have been out of Rhode Island, you know. But like you know, we're right here, and I flew to the West Coast out to Washington State, and I'm sitting there in my in my dad's apartment, and he wake well he woke me up and brought me out. It's like you know six in the morning. I'm like, what the hell, Dad? Really? Um, and he's like, no, something's going like the, the Eastern seaboard, you know, when I come out and I see the second plane, like hit as I'm sitting in his living room and I'm like, whoa, what the fuck? And then I had to fly days after that cr back oh, across the country. And it was like horrifically terrifying, you know, like I couldn't get a hold of my, I have a, I had a cell phone and that wasn't you know, a popular thing for mo most people to have back then, but I was very, you know, transient and how I moved and, and, you know, being around. So I had one and, um, you know, it wouldn't work. I couldn't get a hold of my family. They were in like Virginia and you know what I mean? In Maryland. And I had, fam I, you know, I had people here and I'm like, Oh my gosh. So yeah, when nine 11 happened, like I, I, I first saw that, but I foresee something even larger happening, like around the world. Like there's going to be a lot more. It's, I don't know if it's going to be volcanoes or fires or, or fire, like volcano, like uh, fire tornadoes. Something is going to happen where I think it's going to be a lot more ash or Mount St. Helens. You know, I was in my mom's stomach when Mount St. Helens erupted. Mm -hmm. uh, it erupted in May of 1980, and yep. I was born in July. And my dad and my mom said it sounded like someone was just beating their fists on that on her door. And my dad always told me that uh it was the the it was uh, me announcing my uh I was coming. <laughs> but yeah, like it's I, I feel like it's gonna be something even even bigger. I think I think that we are in for it. We we need to really, really prepare for, for what is gonna come. Shit's well, going to hit the fan. <laughs> this is the thing about it. Um, and, and I feel like they realize that the, you know, the, the contract with the American workers that, you know, if, if you agree to surrender your need to husband your own animals, raise your own gardens, care for your own meat, raise your own children, raise your own family, you know, put all that aside. Let us own all the land. Let us care for all the meat, 5,000 head at a time under one roof in a consolidated animal industrialized feeding process, right? Let us grow all your gardens in massive, massive, corporate farms where we can pickle everything and glyphosate every 10 days in the growth. And that's cycle. why they destroy the environment is Let that us we are dependent on them children away to boarding schools, to public schools, 
right? And now you can focus. You don't have to worry about caring for your own meat. You don't have to worry about raising your own crops. You don't have to worry about teaching your own children. You can just focus on being mined for your labor by the hour as, you as you're exploited and extracted to feed into the rat race system constantly given the carrot and stick of the carrot of you get to live the American dream and the stick being you'll be living on the street against the whims of nature. Mm -hmm. That's that's that that had been the controlling paradigm that's failing because they've been offshoring for ever since the Lewis Powell memo, you know, um, the corporations need to form like Charlie Ultron Brown. 1973. Yeah, I'm trying to... The Lewis Powell memo. So, you know, when that happens, now they have to have a new fear. And I feel like the new existential fear to try to keep people on the rat race path is don't worry about the rat race. We'll, we'll make the money printer go burr. We got the modern monetary theory. We got the. Did you see what Charlie theory. wrote? <laughs> Sounds like La Palma. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, think it's about like Yellowstone. Don't yeah, worry about you it. You know, like they've been talking about that. It's, yeah. it's, it, like, imagine if they all started going off at once. So if that's we had like Mount St. Helens and, and, you know, like all really, the major volcanoes. I, I secretly hope that they all. So, so the new, I, I feel like the new distracting fear to distract you is, you know, you need to trust in us. Just take the UBI. Just, we'll provide everything you need to live at, at the humanitarian shielding camp. Mm -hmm. And in exchange, we'll all be doing our part to stop the cancer of humanity from destroying planet Earth. Amen. Because humans will just make, I guess, make Earth explode or something. I mean, yeah. We're already in an extinction level event. Hundreds upon hundreds of species of flora, fauna, and animals have gone extinct just in the last hundred years. Mm -hmm. Hundreds of species. Hundreds, yep. The only question I have with this extinction level event is, will it include the Homo sapien? So, I, you know... Yona's not worried about the earth to stopping spinning for, on its axis. You know, dinosaur will hold my peace pipe. Trust me. Yeah, man. Earth will purify. Earth will renew. Earth yep. will recycle. It will just be the a matter of whether is, we're here or not. And humans, as a common rainbow tribe, reconnect with nature. to the extent that we can survive as a species in the face of these evil motherfuckers mm -hmm. that want us majority of humanity so disconnected from nature that we're all fucking dead. You see, it's rather that simple. People and don't those understand that get to survive luckily, <laughs> you know, if you're lucky enough to survive, you'll just be in a fucking panopticon of digital surveillance and identity that's exactly what it is that that public private merger and every and then everything that is beautiful about the earth everyone will be fully separated from safely hermetically sealed in their little metaverse where nobody has to leave their bunker or whatever wherever fucking you know what i mean they got you planted and you don't have to do anything they'll come and you know wash you off every so often and feed you through your two they really and, haven't thought this out very well because yeah. we all live at the whim of mother nature and so here's the breakthrough here's the takeaway from round five with yona you see yona the in only, the third person i'm not gonna lie to you like fdr uh, and say that the only thing you have to fear is fear itself oh no no no, no. oh no there's something to feel <laughs> no there's something to fear okay <laughs> 
And fear doesn't mean that it paralyzes you. I mean, because, you know, the great surfers that will catch a wave and ride a wave, they fear the ocean. Yeah. Big waves scared them to fucking death. Self-preservation. But that instills a respect. So when you take your board to the water, you respect the water. Right. And you know, every time you ride that wave, you're riding at the pleasure of the wave. Your skill is just in staying alive. You ain't got shit to do with the energy of that way. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's and, crazy. And, and it's a humbling, humiliating experience. But nature should always humiliate you. Absolutely. Nature should always humble you and put you in your place. And instead, the, the, the prevailing Judeo-Christian narrative is that man has dominion over nature and the women and the children and the beasts. And that's the where the brain damage started right there. That's, that's the, 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 uh, you know, the, the fucking crux of the biscuit right there. That's the thing that fucked people off and got them on two separate paths instead of taking the fucking right one, you know, like, and, you know, I oh. know they've got all this money. They've got all, all this technology and, and, and they're just swimming in such opulence and arrogance. They think they've got this all figured <laughs> out. They think they've got this all figured out and that they can actually run and operate <clears throat> a digital panopticon surveillance society on this planet that's completely and totally divorced from nature. Yeah. And all they will do is completely suffocate themselves like somebody wearing three masks and ear muffs in their sleep. Um, I, I did have something that maybe I think we should probably cover on the next one, unless you think you want to start here. But this kind of ties in. Um, Charlie had mentioned something about how um, like natives, he'll have to explain it better, but how Native Americans on their on their, you know, on their tribal land are bringing in, you know, tourists who think it's cool to come get a sweat lodge or come in you know what i mean get get like certain things and and like them having to you know like people them using that like tourism type stuff mm -hmm. to be able to survive and like well, kind of I like mean, the capitalism were, that's become you know part of that the native culture now there, there i think is that what he's trying to get that, that, that took that approach in the amazon and ecuador amongst the shuar people you know, what I mean, they call it eco tourism. Sure. I can't see why that's, you know, it's certainly no worse than anything else that got them to that point. You know what I mean? It's taking advantage of that point. I mean, like quite it, frankly, I think it's utilizing it, when you have people, have. tourists, call it what, you know, call it as it is, when you have tourists that are taking an active interest in the, spiritual or cultural or history uh for whatever reason they're taking an interest in the tribe and its beliefs and customs mm -hmm. um i don't really see how that can be construed as a, a tourist hustle i mean un unless you know they're just teaching them some type of weird uh you know infomercial bullshit that they're making up i mean you know i would could say it akin to like you know if, if you go to see some creature <laughs> i'd rather see them hustling a, tourists a I think that's gospel or something saying like if you want to go to heaven you got to send me 50 bucks every right. sunday or something you know and right. so you if you're know, going to pat pat robertson's summer camp or something you know like that type of vibe i think they're just they're just exchanging culture they're like they're yeah. they're you know they're putting a value on their culture and saying here you know well we can show you the, our ways and here's how much it costs I mean, and we, we kind of touched on that earlier uh when we were saying that you know people in the rat race have already met this point in their path and that's how you see hedge funders and other expats leaving the cut you know in search of you know i've got this hole in my soul lucky and and i work myself to death and yet 
I just don't, where's the happiness? Where's the nirvana? Where's the bliss? I mean, I'm just burned wow. out, worked out. And what I'm trying to explain to people is you've been mined out, right? Your whole body is just a, is just a series of catacombs of mind shafts at this point. Yeah, you're switched what's been on left the in its place. Uh, well, he clarified, these, he clarified what he was referring to. He was referring to the tribal self-proclaimed medicine in parentheses people. That's what he was saying. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Charlie, I did drop a link if you want to come in and, medicine people and, is and let me know. To traveling self-proclaimed medicine people. Yeah, I put a link in I there. Would, so if I he mean, wants I, to come I don't. I mean, I kind of consider Dr. Anthony Fauci a traveling self-proclaimed medicine person. <laughs> Fuck he is. Absolutely. You know, with his patent medicines. I think you know, that's the idea is if it's a strong into person, town and he sets up his little table and he puts on his top yeah. hat and come on, oil come on, come on, come on, come on. Go away, kid. You bother me. So do you think that the tribes that are on the reservations, which are really kind of like concentration camps, but, you know, I don't know why you guys have to be reserved to a certain area if you're, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't understand that. But um, uh, I, I do you think that they're on. using enough of like that community nature within there within the reservations or do you think that a lot of people have adapted to more of the 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 propagandized culture that we have now like do you think that okay, i mean i know well, you don't know every reservation but you know from your you know from your knowledge and observation out, what do you think out, of that first of all out of respect for spiritual elders that have taken it upon themselves to travel around and try to spread the messages of peace and love. Those are spiritual elders. And, you know, one issue that gets lost in translation very often is the terms of medicine and medicine men, because a medicine man does not necessarily mean the same exact role and function in every single tribe. And, you know, for example, a Cherokee medicine man or a Muscogee medicine man or Choctaw or Chickasaw or Creek medicine man or Seminole medicine man, you would not see a traditional medicine man traveling around and sharing his medicine secrets with anybody. I mean, that's so not medicine man. So there's that regard. But then again, you do have spiritual elders that will go out and speak, you know, and those are not medicine men. They're called prophets, right? Those are spiritual prophets who are prophesizing and, 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 and their job, think of like, maybe like Greek Orthodox church, right? They're elders. They're, 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 or, or the Greek Orthodox church would call them patriarchs, but they're going out and they're spreading these prophetical messages these are but what about visions. the ones i think that what he was saying is he ran to a few who hurt people by peddling pain instead of true humble healing so i think that what you i think that they're like the snake oils pretending yeah. like they're really yeah. my initial take i mean my initial trigger to a traveling native american medicine man sharing his medicine that's not how medicine man works go back and watch some more philip deer if you need a review i mean he, that's so that's knowing that history will help us determine Native whether that men don't work like drug reps going from hospital yeah. to hospital <laughs> so yeah that's that's good you know what i mean but that's good to have a clarification of if somebody is coming around and saying this to you that's not how it works. That's not, you know what I mean? Like another dead giveaway is when they have out a glorious <laughs> thing. If you're if you're if you're meeting with golden eagle feather or yeah. silver buffalo cap, if it sounds like some <laughs> luxuriant mega bucks name, like diamond bear or something, you know, if it's if it's got diamond or gold or silver, I mean I just not that they're on gold tooth and other people, I'm just saying. The more glorious the name sounds, the more suspect it is. I mean, <laughs> my, my friends are, you know, 
coon dick and big meat and grease ball and swimmer <laughs> and jogger and run. I mean, these are the names, you know. Yes, dogs, the true, you know, you know. <laughs> lazy cat or cat door. I mean, just <laughs> it's not there, it's like an inside it's joke into to that people's, name. <laughs> it's it's playing to people's stereotypes. It's yeah. feeding in to I it's, it's just a grift. This is bullshit. <laughs> yeah. It's a jive, man. It's a jive. Follow your, feel your intuition when you run into anybody who proclaims to be a healer. F listen to your gut because, you know, usually you have a sense when, you know what I mean? When you run into somebody, how, you know, your first like feeling on them, it, it a lot of times it can be true. I mean, I would keep an open mind with people. Um, but if you have that, like, whoa, like you have that serious pullback feeling, then, you know, I, I would listen to that. If you feel like I can tell you, if you, if you're with a so-called elder or medicine man or healer and you immediately notice that they're using a lot of third person, mm. <laughs> like Yoda. instead of saying, I have done this and I have done that and people that know me know that my stuff and mine is the best and I and me and mine and let me tell you I've done this all by myself and me and, and yeah no oh, you don't, just you don't flag, do flag, that flag, that flag, way flag, 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 flag. narcissism flag. sounds the same in every language like instead if he's telling you like listen I'm chief Bob Dolan Bob Dole has experienced many winners and Bob Dole has much wisdom. So when Bob Dole tells you, okay, at that point, I'm, I'm going to pay attention to what Bob Dole has to say. Yeah. If it comes from <laughs> me, it's like, it's like we, it's we, I was taught, you know what I mean? Cause like, <laughs> shout out to Norm McDonald. Once again, fucking Norm. Long Norm. God, I'll miss Norm McDonald. That son of a bitch was like. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Lucky. I just, the Bob Dole, the Norm McDonald. I, I, I can't let that slide. We love Norm. <laughs> yeah. Well, because it's it's a taught thing, right? Rest like, like power, the, the truth is taught, and it's usually taught from word of mouth. And, and when I, the, like, when I was studying with, you know, uh, uh, my friend that's a shaman and our elder that was a Lakota uh, elder, um, you know, like I was taught with them hands on right there, you know, and a lot of it I understand because my soul just already knows a lot of these things, but you know, it, it, I was with them, you know what I mean? Like I didn't just go, Oh yeah, let me read this book. And I learned how to pour a sweat lodge me singularly. I, Cause that's not even possible, right? Like you have to tend, you know, you, I mean, you have to build the lodge and you have to do that with intention in the right, you know, the right ways. And there's particular colors that you use and, and trees and, you know, you tend the fires, you have to get the grandfathers. And I mean, if you're going around carrying that many big grandfather rocks by yourself, then, uh, more power to you. I mean, that's awesome. But you know, like there's a whole, there's a whole preparation for something, you know what I mean? Like you have to be clean and you don't want to go into a lodge dirty and all of that. I mean, in order to be renewed first, you have to be purified. And sadly, sadly, there was some purification that took place all night last night. And there's Ooh. all kinds of people that woke up this morning at first light to have the first chance to witness what all the damage was done. Then all the, excuse me, all the blocks leveled by the terrible storms to have the perspective that there's nothing on this earth that could happen to you that can take more away, that can destroy more, that is more truly frightening and scary than the power of nature. So you really have to put it in that perspective. The contract with America, the deal made with the American worker was we'll, we'll grow the food, we'll raise the meat, we'll raise your children. All you have to do is work and then we'll pay you enough to have the house and the car and the front yard 
Yeah, where well, the well, North American colonizers and, and, came and, and, in and said that. You, and you better be afraid of the communists or the terrorists that we're keeping you safe from and just keep doing your job. Well, now that's all falling apart. So the new fear came in. Fear the Rona. Oh, to, Put uh, on your mask. Charlie had another part of that that he was fear, fear the corona. So I just want to to yeah. tie up the whole thing of the fears because mm -hmm. people are are choosing which path to take based upon what they fear more. Mm -hmm. Right? Well, I, yeah, I could fight this mandate and then lose my job. But I yep. fear losing my job more than I fear possibly losing my life to a fucking shot that's not been. Anyways, so moving on, that's the that's the new fear. And and as the COVID fear fades, the Trump card, the last fear to play is you have to do what we say, or you are helping. To end all life on earth as we know it. Because you're using too many carbon credits according to your social credit score. And that's the new fear. And so we all have to do our part because humans threaten nature. Humans threaten earth to the humans are so powerful that humans are threatening the end of the earth. Are you sure it's and not the bombs? It's, it, it's, it's totally backwards. So the, the key to freeing people, the key to allowing people to see what's down the other path is, listen, forget that, forget that, and forget that. You only need to fear and respect nature and realize that everything else is a distraction. Yeah. Well, that's going to be the next thing that they're going to use against us, right? They're suddenly going to be like, oh, Lockdowns oh, we climate. recognize climate change. Oh, yep. shit. Yep. Oh, we got to do all of that's this. That's pigeonhole everybody. And, and this is why you got to eat this. And this is why you got to do this. Because, oh, my gosh, the climate is really collapsing. Well, you, oh, look at what we've caused. You bad humans. Well, look. Look at, uh, I see the question from Charlie Brown there, what he's referring to particularly, selling ceremonies. And, you know, there's been a lot of people that have been poisoned with ayahuasca from bad batches. There's a little um, bit you know, clearly that that that's it sounds to me like, you know, grift grifting gone wrong. Um, and the question they're specifically referring to people selling ceremony. Let me say it that way. People got hurt because we all have a need for healing and understanding. Yeah. You know, taking advantage of people, just you know, grifting gone wrong. Um, and that's why I say it's all about free will and free surrender, you see, because whatever you fear the most, you will surrender to those fears. And then that directs which path you to with that then directs which path you choose and how you walk and talk to keep yourself in line on that path as you tow that path and you know and sometimes we think we're to free the, too oh, on those ahead. paths when you surrender to the power of nature it's a liberating experience and 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 that's what i mean when you realize the spirit force in all of us the connection that I mean that's what you've been missing that intrinsic fact, that's what's been, you know, I'm telling you, hey, all that doubt and uncertainty, all that yearning for spiritual fulfillment. Yeah, it's really there. Yeah, you're right. You feel mind out and empty because you have been mind out and empty. <laughs> I don't have a Patreon page. I don't have anywhere where you can donate and send money. I don't want your money. You know, I'm just telling you the truth for the sake of telling you the truth. And I mean, that that's what medicine is. Medicine is love. Medicine is truth. Yep. Medicine is not cash on delivery. Medicine is not for a limited time only. Medicine is not a supplied limited situation. And medicine is not exclusive. 
<coughs> but you know, the future a rem is very bright. All right. Hey, how's it going, a rem? Well, there's there's also like at the same time, I feel like if we take the time to just like fucking did something over there um if we take the time to learn the different medicines the herbs all the you know wild harvesting and we share those things with our community like that's the kind of mutual aid that's really awesome to do is to you know if you go out and you go wild mushroom hunting and you can properly identify and you know that something is safe or you go out and get berries or something you know like an herb to dry tea um if you go and you share that and you share that you know i will help you learn this skill you know, this skill that is actually a survival skill, a lot of people are more willing to go out and do it with somebody that, that they feel like has that knowledge instead of trying to conquer that on their own. And that might seem like something small, but it continues on. Like, you know, it, it, it starts, it starts an effect. It starts a ripple. That's the basis because, of the community. That's you know? what lies down the path to the right. I'm telling you, it, Every That's how we I, bring people into that path. Every though, time you know? I get the football with my thought process and I'm ready to go another 10 yards, as soon as I look up, Lucky's already there. He's <laughs> already there with me. That's because we connect, brother. Yeah. We're on the same like. This is what I'm talking about. Okay, what happens when you take that turn to the right and go down the path toward connecting with nature? What's the first thing that happened? Well, in order to connect with nature, in order to connect with something, and in order to connect with somebody, you have to open you up. You have to open up and get to know them, right? So if you're going to connect with nature, you have to actually get to know nature, right? To know mm -hmm. what kind of tree it is, whether you see the bark or the leaf, a dead leaf or a live leaf or a flower, you know? Mm -hmm. identifying plants identifying birds identifying the tracks left behind from animals if, if you know if you decide that um after three or four months of vegan living eating nothing but roots and moss and berries and nuts that um fucking bunny might be really good right now squirrels are looking tastier and tastier <laughs> picturing yeah. them roasting on a stick so you know eventually you just have to keep learning more and more and more about nature. Um, I feel like if you want to eat meat, though, morning. you should know how to process it. You should know how to hunt it. You should know how to process Absolutely. it. You shouldn't be able to just go to a grocery store and buy a pretty little package and say, OK, yeah. I mean, you should be able, you should have to honor the, the life of what you you know what I mean? Like you need to honor that. All right? that knowledge has been taken away. How was that knowledge taken out of people? It was mind. mind. I know, but that's what we got to fill that. We got to fill that. Yeah, we got a bunch in. of holes to fill in. Yona. Extracted from people's lives. Yona, and we got a bunch of Swiss cheese to fill up in these yeah. people. Like fill in all the little. We'll help them fill their spackle own. Them. We got to spackle the holes. No, 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 no. They need to do that themselves, though. We just need to give them the stuff and say, <laughs> hey, this is how we do it. And we tell them how. I'll show you what it is that you need. But I'm not going to do it for you. Yeah. I will show you how to do Teach it. Teach a man to fish. Well, you know, people... I mentioned uh, bear grills earlier, and that yeah. you know, I I would think to some, you know, to a lot of people in the rat race, the idea of like a Tom Hanks type castaway situation happening, where all of a sudden they're just flung into an off grid situation where there's no cell phone, there's no Seven Eleven. You know, and and it's just you and nature. It's just Joe and the volcano to throw yeah. Tom Hanks. You got you got to figure it, it, nice but, double but, tanks there. But I would like to think that you know a big appeal of people watching the show, like shows like Bear Grylls, is that it amazes people, and it is an empowering thought that 
this guy here, Bear Grylls, man, they can just take him in a chopper and drop him anywhere on planet Earth. This motherfucker's going to survive. Mm -hmm. But that's and, what we all used to do, right? Yeah, like, not, essentially, that's what every not, human is capable no. of doing. It, it, it's 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 surrendering yourself completely to nature and living under the commands and totalitarian authority of yeah. nature yeah because nature nature has very strict rules yeah and nature has something for your ass if you're not prepared that's that's the deal like i mean with all due respect to political correctness and some people that, you know, I want to be sensitive and respectful to people, but I've seen a lot of language changing. I've seen completely invented and made up pronoun words and recognizing that there is a spectrum. I mean, in Cherokee, there's something called two paths, you know, people who walk two paths at the same time. You know, talking about gender dysphoria or uh, gender fluidity and other things that, you know, there are words for that in Cherokee. So, I mean, it's not that. What I find uh, ridiculous are the invention of entirely new pronouns, kind of like, I just see it being co-opted, just like yeah. all these other virtue signals mm -hmm. that the Democratic Party in particular has taken in co-opting you know when it means nothing i mean i i don't care if you make up new gender neutral pronouns for the bombs you're dropping on poor people right still dropping bombs on poor people it's, it's a distraction it's another division another distraction just you know it's another times table to fucking dice everybody up into and like oh well you didn't call me this so you're it seems every Every type of virtue signal disqualifies itself if you look at it at a, on its face. You know what I mean? And like really call it what it is. It's there. There is no. There's no position of virtue that you can have over another fucking human. You're a fucking human. We're all on the same virtuistic fucking th spectrum, right? So like inventing new three-letter, four-letter combinations that are that are pronouns just seems futile at best and of course it's been co-opted by the worst, the worst to people the worst faction of people but this goes you back know, to capitalism too yeah this whole thing does too because um remember like girls wear pink boys wear blue and i'm always going off about this because yeah. it like don't divide me based upon color i'm gonna wear whatever i want and i think that it, it's it's this thing of like you know the masculinity and like oh i can't act that way because i'm this or i can't cry because of this reason and like that whole like we are divided from birth depending on like the sex that we are and we're supposed to do certain things and certain colors and you know like people were so Crazy confused girls. about you know like my you know my daughter when she was a baby i would dress her in pink and blue and green and yellow and and purple and and like they would not know what to do because they're like oh do you have you know like uh is your child a boy or girl or he or she you know what i mean like it and they would ask me, you like, I, I know, let me just finish my thought, please. Uh, they would ask me, like, if she was a boy or a girl, and I would say, it doesn't, doesn't. I mean, I, it doesn't really matter, but you know, her her name is Skyla. You know, like it, it's it's even when you meet somebody's dog, it's like, oh, do you have a boy or girl? You know what I mean? Like, I get asked that all the time. It's like, why does that matter? Well, you see, again, it's weird, right? <laughs> You know, from the perspective of our society and how we perceive reality today, there, you know, I feel like the, the natural discussions of uh, the role that procreation plays in the furtherance of our species and being able to remain on planet Earth and our place in natural law 
has really been obscured by our technological society and the way that so many things have been tried that, that the society like like the artificial construct of whiteness is an attempt to homogenize what we call the melting pot and so all girls paint all boys blue everything's been homogenized just all blended together and melted together until it's all just one bland construct this is how it's framed this is how it is and and, and the truth is I think it's probably looked at in the same regard when people look at how our societies are organized in terms of animal plans, you know. I mean, we have a Blue Holly pediatric plan, the Anishahone. We have the Anichisqua, the bird clan. Uh, different tribes have different plans like beaver clan and beer, uh, uh, bear clan. And we have a wolf clan. Um, we have a deer clan because we see that, you know, the deer nation, the buffalo nation, the bear nation, we recognize the bird nation and what all of these different living communities of life and how intertwined we are with these different communities of life, how in, interdependent we are upon one another. And without each other, we simply cannot survive without the turtles, without the beaver, without the deer, without the buffalo. And, and that really reflects our intense, intense connection and relationship with nature and the natural world. And so, um, you know, probably the, the, the single most uh, important function of every tribe that has survived has been in pediatric medicine in number one fertility of women and preserving the fertility of women and then in pediatrics in childhood medicine so that once infants and babies are born <coughs> excuse me we have the medicines and teas and tinctures and poultices and whatnot to then hopefully uh, treat the children when they get sick so as to hopefully get them to adulthood. Otherwise, your tribe will never, ever, never survive. And again, that's when you're living at the mercy. We're getting audio buzz. Can you check uh, and see if it's just the charger? Just turn off my mic over there. But yeah, basically yeah, that, that's when you're living at the, on the top thing. You're living at the mercy of and nature. Right on it. All the way over to the left. No. Which one? The other side. This? Yeah. You turn that one back all the way. How is that, guys? Does it sound okay now? Uh, the bus is gone. Okay. Is it still gone? So to wrap up, uh, I'm saying it's coming and going. To to wrap up number five here, the thing to, I think the thing that really helps to liberate people that are in the deepest states of hypnosis that seem the hardest to reach. Right, I've, I've heard the saying that the 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 hardest slaves to free are those who believe they're already free or that they're oh, slaves, essentially. That right? is so true. Oh right? my God. Um, and so, you know, it's just like the hardest people to convince uh, they've not been fooled are the ones that have been fooled, right? So, um, I mean, like, that's why cults work, right? Like, right. it's that same thing. And, and that's what we have today. We have a huge masked cult literally suffocating suffocating on their own carbon dioxide as their oxygen levels drop from the induced hypoxia from wearing you know sub, i mean anyways I, I don't want to get sidetracked it's very important to realize that if you can get 
someone to realize that there is something to fear and that is nature itself and when you only you because ultimately you, there, there can only be one supreme fear there's always going to be one supreme fear that will take supremacy and priority over all other fears something that scares you more than anything else and ultimately what scares me more than anything else is the natural power of the earth i mean i know that at any time the earth can just say fuck it and shake every last human being off this planet like a wet dog mm -hmm. shaking off fleas yep we are the fleas so you know um dinosaurs will hold my peace pipe they'll hold your beer dinosaurs didn't kill this planet no carbon-based life form will kill this planet so yeah the only thing that's going to kill this planet is the sun if the sun gets pissed off i mean well there goes the solar system with it there's a reason why it's called the solar system but and people like have such a disconnection to the earth and it's so easy for them to just be disconnected in that way that like they don't even paying attention that this earth the earth is going to just pay you know screw you you guys have too much of an evil population at this point like there's no going back i think that you know the earth feels the pulse of the people that that do care and that do want better and and you know i think that you know she's she's hanging on but we're losing and this her. has all been prophesized this has all been prophesized and make no doubt about it I, i'm gonna uh, foreshadow before I before I leave here to put the babies in bed. I, I want to foreshadow and turn to the sixth iteration, which is where we're getting where we're going to actually talk about you know what is actually happening, right? You know, the time of the patriarchy is over. Okay. The time of male domination of women, male domination of children, male domination of nature, that time is over, my friends. And we are in the midst of the great shift back to matriarchy, where the mothers and the mother clans purify the land. And thus the land is renewed, you see. Because only women can purify and renew. Women, by their biological nature, go through the uh, monthly cycle of purification and renewal that accompanies ovulation. Yeah, and our cycles like go together. Like women in a tribe yes. together will cycle they, they together. They will synchronize cycles according to the lunar cycle. Oh, it ha yeah, it happens. It's based upon the lunar cycle. Just I know, like, tides like of the full ocean. moon. That's when you know, mine's at the full moon. Doesn't matter what our cat. Like you know what I mean? It's not. It, it's based on the moons. It's not based on. You know what I mean? Like, like so many days or this or that. Nope. It's moons. And so that's where episode six will pick up. You know, episode five is okay. With episode four, this is where we are. This is the present moment. It looks very dire. And, you know, it can seem hopeless and helpless, exhausting. Um, Today's episode is, you know, listen, don't freak out. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we're going through a transition. We're, we, we have come to the fork in the road today. And that moment is now. And we've already got people pouring down the right path. And we're already coalescing because we're here. The moment is now, the day has come, the time has arrived. So, and this right here, what we are starting right here 
is the beginning of us networking and getting these larger ideas and bringing people together. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of other channels that we, you know, we're all on, we get what is happening, you know what I mean? In, in, in the, the sphere of it, but this, in this show, we kind of look at the overview of it and how we got here and how we're going to figure out that path forward. Because there is a greater order to things and all of these little puzzle pieces all fit within one huge grand picture. And so what is that grand picture? Well, this mining empire taking pleasure at will, taking life, taking pleasure, satisfying lust without consent. This raping, extracting society has been the trademark of patriarchy ever since they took over. And so we're witnessing and we're now living in the shift back to matriarchy. And so, of course, what is the cutting edge of the patriarchy battle against matriarchy now? Mothers is a dirty word. Men can be birthing persons too. Men can menstruate too. Men who identify as women should still be able to go into the women's shower with a swing and dick at curves for women. That to me is the leading edge of patriarchy versus matriarchy and completely dishonoring and disrespecting women and the role of women in human society. Okay whether we're talking the role of men in society or the role of women in society. We are a natural living species. And but they there distract is such us. a thing as XX and XY. And there's also points in between. There are hermaphrodites both in the human species and what well, people that have grown marijuana know. Marijuana plants can hermaphrodite. Right? Female plants, if there ain't no pollen balls around, those hairs will cross up and they will self-pollinate. So, you know. This, oh, hey. Oh. <laughs> oh, see, okay, soda. oh, hi, sweetheart. Oh. But anyways, see? that is what episode six is about. That is where we're headed. And we got to do that, it for that generation cover. right there. On the next round here, and I've already got my schedule <laughs> for next week. So let's see. I'm off Monday, and I'm off Thursday. So we can do matriarchy Mondays. <laughs> okay. We're just gonna start it up now. Yeah, no, this is a this is a so, I mean, this is what it's really about. I mean, you want, I mean, people are like, okay, I, I've got this hole in my soul. I, all right, okay, I'm at the fork in the road. Okay, Yona, let's take this right hand turn, let's take this path connect to nature and oneness and blah 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 and sing kumbaya. What's it all about, man? Just get to the point. And okay, I'm not going to make you suffer through an infomercial, I'm not going to go all Billy Mays on you here, you know. <laughs> It's about matriarchy. It's about matriarchy. Just think about it. XY is the man. XX is the woman. Every single man has woman in him. Ain't mm -hmm. no man and woman. There's yeah, woman. Your form man. does a woman. You're formed as a female, and then you you mm -hmm. turn to being a male. See, everything you think you know is wrong everything you've been taught i know it's is man has always been put first over women down. children on their mothers mothers on their men <laughs> right but we think men on the mothers and the children and again it's all ass backwards don't worry I'll help sort it all out for you. Hey, I can grow a human in my body and then I can make the milk to feed that human. I think that's a superpower. 
<laughs> it is, it, it's the very essence of the connection of our race and and our nation when you look at all the other nations the buffalo nation the beaver nation the dog nation the cat nation right that's how we're all interconnected so <laughs> matriarchy it's what's for monday yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh i'm trying to get leo's show real quick come here oh wow <gasps> look uh, it uh, oh oh stop <laughs> oh comb your hair again there, just do this you know do the locks they're, they're easier <laughs> Oh my goodness. He's a good boy. <laughs> well, he just popped a squat on the floor Indian style here. He's going to pow out with us, I reckon. I need to get him to bed. It's late. Leo plays the drum. You'll have to you'll have to show him <laughs> some of the, the Leo drumming videos. They're on they're on the channel. <laughs> well that's little Kaya Soda. Oh Kaya Soda, that's beautiful. He's beautiful. named after uh the Seneca uh war chief who was the guide for General George Washington when he first uh wanted to explore the Ohio Valley, you know, to claim land for himself. He called Kyasota the hunter. He couldn't say his name, but uh, there are a number of statues of Kyasota all around the country um, because he was uh, repeatedly on expedition after expedition after expedition. Kyasota was always the personal guide for General George Washington showing them all around the Kanawha Valley and Muskingum Valley and Ohio Valley, Allegheny, and Monongahela, and all the other rivers <clears throat> there in the Appalachians. <sighs> yeah, I named, uh, I named my daughter. Her name was going to be either Sky or Sage. And uh, I heard the name Skyla. And I was like, that's that's her name. Like, I just knew it when I heard her name is Skyla. And uh, so we call her Sky. But <laughs> there's a lot of beauty in a name. Well, he ran over here and jumped up on my lap just in time to fart on me. <laughs> I think Leo just farted on me, too. I mean, what the hell, guys? Are, are they in coordination? You get that. <laughs> they're like they're like you guys are synchronized in the brain and we're synchronized too we're just letting you know <laughs> all right so matriarchy is is a little bit more of a deeper involved subject mm -hmm. um and so i'm gonna say monday we're probably gonna want to get into it i mean normally i like to wait till after oz or stuff like that but um, I mean, there, there's at least two videos I know we've got to watch to, you know, try to introduce people to, you know, what matriarchy really is. Because in order, I mean, anymore, you really kind of have to start out with, you know, defining the term as you intend to describe it. You know, you kind of have to frame where you're coming from. And, when, okay, when I'm talking about matriarchy, this is what I'm referring to. And this is what we're talking about. And so um, I was going to say, like, probably around, like, like 9 or 9.30 Monday night, because it's probably going to run about three hours to really have, I mean, this is what we're going back to, you know, when, when the Hopi Rainbow Prophecy talks about 
we're all living as one tribe of many colors. And if I have an idea, if you have an idea, if I have intellectual property, if you have intellectual property, we all get to use it. You're not paying taxes to anybody. There's no more jails. There's no more money, economic borrowing and interest rates. That shit's gone. It's no longer a patriarchy. It's a matriarchy. And so, yeah, I'm going to have to explain that because people really don't know what the hell a matriarchy is anymore. A lot of people don't even know what a patriarchy is. So you know, just some basic things we kind of need to describe where we've been and where we're going. So that's what's next. <laughs> Okay, so kids, do your homework. Come with We're in a great transition, all right. We're going back to a matriarch. Yeah, that's... <laughs> what's that? I mean, that's what the prophecies say, and everything they said has been proven right. So who am I to disagree? Yeah. Sweet dreams are made of this. <laughs> all right. Sing it, well Annie Lennox. <laughs> We are going to say goodnight to Yona so we can go, you know, put those beautiful babies to bed. I'm going to stay on here for a little bit if anybody wants to uh, jump in on the stream. Or uh, maybe I'll just ramble. I don't know. And I'll so, circle back in the chat here in a little while once I get them to sleep. Love right, you guys. I'll see good. you Monday. Chitak right. Chisasty. Mm -hmm. Take care, everybody. Namaste. <laughs> How is everybody? I, are you guys excited about about next week's or not even next week's Monday's show? <laughs> uh oh, Aram, what happened? Killed your anime watching bus. <laughs> yes. I am I am so so very grateful for uh Yona and uh I'm I'm very grateful for my own um you know saying Yona you're way too smart and funny and uh you have to come on the channel like there's just no you have no choice <laughs> just like all of you not even you have a choice everybody's got to come on and uh you know it doesn't have to be this you know this same deep dive it's whatever you know, whatever you want to talk about or feel passionate about, or if you want me to pick a random subject of all the ones that I have like written down that I'm like, we got to talk about these things. You guys like, please let me know because uh, I want you guys all to, to know it's, you know, this is a, this is a community space and I am really excited for the things to come in the journey that we're on and how like, we're, you know, we're beginning all this together. It, it's just, it's, it's pretty amazing. I feel like we are building a, a larger community and family that, that is gonna, you know, we're gonna make a difference with uh, what, with what we do. I really, really feel like that. Yes, definitely, Jilly, you're right. Respect over fear. Thanks, Wes. I'm, I'm, he said, fantastic discussion. I'm glad that you like it. I, I really, it, it's pretty amazing to, uh, to sit and, and talk on such a deep spiritual, like, level and, and see the people you know, that we see around within our, our community of the other places that we go. And I just think that that's pretty, you know, it's pretty awesome. I like seeing everybody's, you know, faces and, and you know, and, and the more, the bigger the personality, you know, like, like how it is seeing everybody like on screen or whatever. Hey, Ram, you're so funny. What y'all said. <laughs> Hi, Trish. How are you? Yes. Yes. Thank you for sharing with us. <laughs> you guys are excited for next week. I'm really excited for next week. Like, that's, that's some shit right there. 
<laughs> oh yeah. I love I love Yona. Yoda. Yona in the third person. <laughs> Oh, Charlie Brown, you're so sweet. It's truly an honor to walk along with you all, Stever. Or, yeah, Stever. Yeah, it's for reject patriarchy. Where did that just go? I see this thing, these things, like, they move on you, and then suddenly you're like, wait, I was trying to click that and then it just like zooms up on you <laughs> yeah i want to see everybody's faces and even if you don't want to put your face on you can have an avatar because i can show you see i can just have that and you guys can do the same thing And there's Yona back. <laughs> so, is anybody going to join me on here? I put the link in there. I don't know if it went, like, way back. I can put it in there again. It's really easy. You just grab that link and click it, and you can come in and have a conversation. Oh, yeah, there was um, some things I wanted to show you guys. Uh, All right, let me see if I can find that. Sorry, I know it's quiet right now. I am, I am going to... Uh, I'm going to find something real quick. I wanted to have this queued up before, but I didn't get it up on the screen. Let me see. It will be worth it, I'm telling you. I like... Uh, being able to um, share some of the the music and stuff that um, that I find and that you know others might not know and you know it's freaking crazy crazy beautiful all right I'm gonna put this one on And I'm going to go and share this with you guys. Oh, whoops. Oh, don't do that. I don't want your things. Mountains to the Allegheny. They left before daybreak on a buckskin and a rope. Past dark shivering pine trees where the mockingbirds roam. Past dark cloudy windows Where eyes may never see Across the Blue Ridge Mountains 
Oh, whoops. The song until it ends. We are winners, champions of the light, forming a numbers and might. Keep the truth close to this silent woman, medicine man. Walk in with grace, I know your face, and I trust your hand. Medicine woman, medicine man. Walk in with grace, I know your face, and I trust your head. Find your teachers in the voice of the forest, some plug you can't ignore this, wisdom of the voiceless. Remedies are bound to fall and surround us, from the garden to the farthest, pray your may to start us. Find your healing in the music that calls you, the voice that enthralls you, what do you belong to? Eyes up, there's the setting of the sun, give thanks to each and every one. The lesson is the medicine woman, medicine man. Walk in with grace, I know your face and I trust your hands. Medicine woman, medicine man. Walk in with grace, I know your face, and I trust your hand. With an extending my chapter, I can tell the message is in action. The art is beating, stop stuck to disbelieving, cause the garden holds the charge, the medicine is in the seeds. We hold tight to our right to protect them. We know our might is tenfold in connection. Our elders hold them bright lights, we protect them. The medicine is evident, the wolf, the hawk, the bear clan. We hold tight to our right to protect them. We know our might is tenfold in connection. Our elders hold them bright lights, we protect them. The medicine is evident, the wolf, the hawk, the medicine woman. Medicine man, walk in with grace, I know your face, and I trust your hands. Medicine woman, medicine man, walk in with grace, I know your face, and I trust your hands.
Trust the movement, I negate the chaos, uplift the negative, I'll show up at the table again and again and again, I'll close my mouth and learn to listen, whoa, whoa, oh, oh. whoa, whoa, oh, oh. whoa, whoa, oh, oh. whoa, 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 These times are poignant, the winds have shifted, it's all we can do to stay uplifted, pipelines through backyards, wolves howling out front, yeah, I got my crew, but truth is what I want, realigned and on point, power to the peaceful, prayers to the water, women at the center, all vessels open, to give and receive let's see the system brought down to its knees So I thought that, you know, that's just super relevant. Yeah, yeah, Bella, these are just like amazing, amazing women. Um, I think that I have another one that I wanted to play. I know I played one that I wasn't going to, but let me see, where's their... I am subscribed to them. I <laughs> just not logged in. Let's see. Um, let 
Oh my god, which one was it? Maybe it was... I don't know. This one's 4 minutes and 20 seconds. So maybe this is the one I was thinking of. This just a like uh, somehow it opened its own tab. I don't know how that happened. Hang on. <laughs> this should show up. Yes. Smaller, leaving by the angels of the wall. Push him up, push him up. Put away your cares. Fold them, fold them. Fold up your feet. Push him up, push him up. Put away your cares. Fold up your feet. Say, come to this river in the arms. There's nothing to be alarmed. He said, the more I know, the more I did. And the more I return to myself round every bit mm. Push him up, push him up <laughs> Put away your kids Fold them, fold them Fold up your feet Push him up, push him up Put away your kids Fold up your feet. <laughs> Push him up, push him up. Put away your care. Fold them, fold them. Fold up your feet. Push him up, push him up. Put away your care. Fold them, fold them. Fold up your feet. Won't you leave my dear? Won't you leave my dear? 
All right, I'm go I'm trying to figure out how to pull up the video because it uh doesn't show up the same way when I'm in StreamYard. So I think I can you can find it. Yes, okay. All right, did I get to the right thing? You gotta tell me. Oh, yeah, I got the right one. Okay. <laughs> See how that is for volume.
Whoa, that was so freaking cool. Holy shit. All right, so I saw another link in the chat. Let me see. I don't want to like miss anybody, so you guys tell me I don't want to I don't want to miss anything. I see one that you put here, Bella. Or no, BS items. Vicky, you put it here. And is there another one? You guys gotta tell me which ones are what. Um... All right, let me see if I can find this. This is like the easiest way for me to do it. There we go. And I can make funny faces while I'm trying to find this. Do 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 do. What is the name? It was. Now make sure we got the right one here. I believe this might be it. All right. Wait. Is that it? Did I get the right one? <laughs> oh, <are you? laughs> yeah, we can uh, copy the links too, and we'll put links for the videos and stuff in the in the description. Look at that! I'm two for two with the right one. Gabby, my name is Gabby. And now the questions I, oh. I want to ask the governor. Well, I have three questions. <laughs> Three questions. One, why didn't why didn't he keep his promise and shut down the LNZ plant? 
And my second question is, does he really want to to release the the pollutants into the river because the animals in the river gave gave up our their lives to give us power to to sur to survive. And three, does does he really like the good air and good water because? If he would have shut down the LNG plant, the LNG plant is releasing the the pollutants into the water, and the river or the water is going is going. It goes into the well, Olympia well, and the Olympia well. Goes into the water source, and the water source leads to every everything in the, in the planet's water. So we would have, if we would drink water, we could get really sick and die. I there were people there that that I had to ask, and then they were going to ask the governor because the governor is busy. Well, the feeling of my warm toesies, and like the water is so fun to play with, it's just amazing there. <laughs> so, my pop cases, look at that parking lot, it's sold out. Cecia, uh, Uncle Live, Pizza. Uh, so that's good. Lubachi B, BC, Chet. Greetings, friends and family. Uh, it's good that we gather together today like this. Uh, my traditional name that I share with my father on my Yakima uh, side is Upsilai. My uh, taxpayer name is Jeremiah George. And uh, I'm going to enroll as a tribal member. Um, and I raise my hands to all of you. Uh, I want to sing a, a blessing song to get things going. But uh, I just uh, want to express my appreciation for the organizers. Uh, and I apologize if I forget any names, but Noel is the main name I can remember at this moment. Uh, but I know that there are others behind the scenes, like those uh, making the tea and laying out some of the food and as well as some of the uh, cultural art expressions uh, over here. Um, it's uh, something that I believe is creating a positive impact for not only tribal people in uh, taking the holiday of today that, that is a recognition of uh, someone who never really set foot on the continent and didn't uh, have the rosy uh, story that, that we're all taught in grade school. And uh, as, as, for, as far as my own experience, it's good to have this uh, push nowadays to have uh, uh, All right. Well, that was that was awesome. I love that little girl, man. Like, she's definitely a fiercely authentic little girl. And I mean, what happens 
what happens when you know the little girls that are fearlessly authentic and and just you know when you're a kid usually you are you tell the truth you don't you, like, you know like unless you're in like trouble you know but I mean, <laughs> at what point does it become like acceptable, you know, to to lie to a little girl like that and say, no, you're, you know, like you're you're not worth <laughs> you're not worth it. I don't care if you have fresh water or, you know, like like can they go look the people in the eye? Can they go look the people that don't have a house in the eye and say? How are we going to pay for it? Can you look at the starving children and, and think that that's okay and say, you know, you're not worth it and then drive away in their, you know, fancy, fancy car? It's just, it's heartbreaking. It's, it's heartbreaking. Uh, like, like I always say, you know, if I could give one thing to the planet it wouldn't be like world peace or ending hunger i would give people honesty like <laughs> truth give them truth so i mean it's pretty crazy to me how the manipulation that not only is propagandized into us and and you know like from a child you know, it all it all goes back to, um, you know, I was raised with Santa and the Easter Bunny and all those things, and you're you're completely lied to from then, and you're propagandized from a young child, and then even through that, children usually can can maintain their you know their their light and everything but at one at some point a lot of it just gets squashed and then it somehow becomes acceptable to be a liar and and just ignore when you know that you know you're both lying or whatever because what it makes you feel better or digest it better instead of just telling the freaking truth like when I ask somebody something, I want their honest opinion. And when I give my opinion, I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm not going to, I'm not going to like say, yeah, you look great in that, you know, cause that's what you want to hear. I'll tell you like how I really feel about it. Like, why would you ask if you don't want an honest answer? I don't know. Let me see. What are you guys saying over here? I don't know what's happening. Oh, yeah. Steve went up to lay down a while ago. Um, Yeah, normal is lying um, as a, you know, as a sex society. Like, but at one point, like, you know, like, where does that, where does that happen? Like, where does it happen where suddenly, like, I don't know, the way I was taught as a kid, you know, you're supposed to tell the truth and, you know, not supposed to steal and, you know, blah, 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 you know, like, do unto others as you want done unto you. But then, I see all these adults. It's like they turn into an adult and adult becoming an adult becomes like becoming a liar. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Yeah. I like it straight up too. I don't, I don't, <laughs> it's so it's ridiculous to me. Cause it's like, okay, so you both can be saying like a lie. right? And then you have to remember your lie that you told somebody and you know, someone can lie right back to you and you can both know that you're lying. 
but you know it's you both know it and you just ignore it <laughs> like you can't say it or 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 just <laughs> i don't get it i don't get it yeah lies are the beginning then delusion sets in absolutely and you know what it, it's it's pretty crazy um because uh you can they can sit there and interrogate you in a police department and i don't remember what i think it was like a matter of two hours they can convince you that you have done something that you haven't and they can get a lot of people to falsely com confess in, in ways that you know should not be you know like it's insane like so if they can get you to do that and they can get you to believe their lie then you know like you can you can you can replace you know you can replace that lie with what you think is true and you can honestly say that you think it's true because it's been you know programmed into your brain oh is that why you never fit in i don't know what happened <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, because it's it's yeah, it's lying is in a sick society, yeah. And I, you know, I feel like, you know, I never, uh, I don't know. I guess I, I never like, I never really cared where I fit in. I just kind of made like, <laughs> I made my friends, and like, in high school, you know, everybody's like, everybody talks about how they have like. You know, I was like with the jocks or I was with the, you know, whatever kids or the nerds or the band kids. I was friends with people from every like background and got all the different like kind of like clicks to hang out together and everything like that. Like just the longer that we allow those things to to matter and the, the whole like separation of everything, the longer that we allow that to be like that, the, the more that we're just going to stay divided. It, it's the same, like in school, it's like, you know, it, it's reaffirmed that if you're part of this club, then you're, you know, like these are your people. And it just discounts all these other people that you could have so many more other things in common with. But it becomes like this tribal, like territorial like thing. And the same thing continues as, you know, an adult. And it's like you become an adult and then you see these same social like constructs happening in in work and workplaces and in families and in like all these places. And it's definitely natural to like have like a tribe and all that and like want, you know. Like that's that that is like integrated into our brains, you know, but at the same time, we're leaving out so many people by doing that. And like it's like it continues like when you go into college, it's like the fraternity thing, you know, like we're constantly allowing ourselves to to be put in categories and we stay in those categories and the more that we break those like social norms and break stereotypes and point out that stereotypes are there and that it's not true. And the more that we do that, the better off we will be, because that's how we're going to say, you know, why does that matter? <laughs> like when we just start saying like, I'm not going to allow these, you know, all these labels and all these like divisive things and these boxes when when we stop giving them power then then you know it's like it's no it's like when you talk about things and then they they become no longer taboo like we need to take back take back shit and like stop letting them make it taboo all right i want to see what you guys are saying yeah not adults, just big children, some with careers or comfort. Yes. Yeah, you know, I, I'd i rather be the oddball and uh, 
<laughs> be the big kid and you know just why is it that you have to like grow up and become like this serious human is that what you know is that what growing up is is becoming disconnected and you can't have fun anymore and you got to be a grown up like i know that there's responsibilities but I don't know. I've raised my daughter to have age appropriate responsibilities her whole life. You know, like it's just, you get different responsibilities, but you shouldn't have to suddenly be like stuffy and lie and just like become this consumer that just never, you know, never stops feeding that machine. So you were taught not to lie by adults who wouldn't know the truth if it hit them in the face. Yeah. It's it's ridiculous. Oh, you have a, a song? Do you want me to play that, um, Vicky? Or are you just dropping a link? Let me know what you're uh what you want me to do. Oh, Bella, yeah, I'm getting a little tired myself. I know. I know. But sleep well. Charlie Brown said, I've always been an outsider, walks between worlds. I get along with most everyone, but never fit in anywhere. My lodge lies in the outskirts of society. Well, Charlie, guess what? <laughs> Welcome to the tribe. <laughs> yeah, I've always been kind of like an, you know, I don't know. I was friendly with everybody, uh, but until like the, the more... Like the more authentic I became, you know, like with myself and 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 holding myself to that account. And like the more that I did that, the more that I found that there's a lot less people who are really authentic and true and that will have your back. And, you know, in times where, you know, when others walk away, um, like, you think that you're going to have certain people that stay there and, like, have that loyalty, you know, like, that ride or die, and they don't. And it's like, <laughs> was I fooled the whole time? <laughs> Were they just good, like, liars? Like, what, you know? I guess I always think about it, too, though. The people that are, you know, when people come into your life and you're going through some shit, like some real shit and the people stay with you that you know like gone through all kinds of you're going through all kinds of it you're just really not in a good place and the people that come and they stay with you or they flock towards you when you're not doing good those are the people you want those are the people you want when when shit's going good you know, like I want the people that are that are there no matter what. Because I want to be able to do the same with them. Oh, that will make me sign in. Uh oh. Yeah, I think it's a gift too. Well, Charlie Brown. Yes, you, you long for meaningful connections, so I've blabbed my deepest thoughts and feelings onto the interwebs. Yeah, but it's because, like, you know, you you stop. Like, I wasn't going to ever, like, do a podcast. I was so weird about, like, even um, going on, like, the microphone just here at home or whatever, like, when Steve would be on um, and doing live stuff. Like, I was always fine in, like, when I was in public, but I didn't, like, go up and stand on the, you know, go and talk on the mic and all that. But, I mean, I don't have a problem with that, but, like, I just, you know, I don't know. So, when you think about it and, like, you're like, oh, shit, like, anybody could see this at any time and, you know. But it's just a record of this moment in time and it gives us a chance to to connect. So, I think putting it out there to the internet makes you just even more authentic because it's, you know, it's out there, you know, <laughs> like it's just out there in the outer space and bouncing off. And 
I think there's something that is very freeing about that and very healing about that. And I find that and like, and, and saying things that I haven't, that I, you know, about my past or my family and things that I'm processing through and saying, all right, well, I need to talk about this. And knowing that it's something that's going to be difficult for me to talk about or emotionally, you know what I mean? It's, it's going to be a thing for me to say it and say it out loud. And, and it's not that I haven't shared things with people, but it wasn't in such a large, you know, completely out there where, where people that I haven't said could go and see it, you know? And I, I feel like there's something really freeing in that just to be authentic and be like, no, this is what happened. And I always thought like, well, I know I need to write a book and I know some um, other people that need to write books. Um, but I always wanted to put in there, like I saw this or I thought this, I don't remember. I'd have to look it up to see if like, it's a quote from somebody else, but you know, if you don't want bad things said about you, you don't want bad things written about you, then you should have behaved better because what truly happened to somebody, if they want to write it or they want to say it, they should be able to say it or they should be able to write it. And people should realize that, you know, you need to own up to your shit. Whether it was the past or, or, you know, or now and be authentic with it and, you know, make, make peace with it. Because the way that it affected me, the things that I'm talking about, I'm making my peace by speaking my truth about what that is. So I don't feel like it's okay for someone else or someone else's feelings getting hurt or whatever could, could, should stop me from sharing something out there to, you know, the larger, the larger audience of, of people within our, you know, within our circle and anybody could be, you know, hanging out or watching it later, but I'm okay with that because that's like, that is being completely authentic and it's, it's very freeing. And I think it's, it's healing. I think that, you know, the more authentic that you are and the more that you are aware of it and, you know, all of that, I think that it just, it brings you more freedom. Yeah, exactly. You are connecting with us, Charlie. <laughs> I don't know what you were saying that to, Choosy. <laughs> Let's see. Charlie Brown said, I agree, Trish. It's just the culture is not healthy substrate for the human animal. Yeah, no, it, it isn't. But how you're changing that is by coming on and, and, and talking about this, though, with us. So, it, you know, we're like, okay, it's not healthy. So th we're doing something. You know, like we're doing something uh, to change that. Oh, yeah, Vicky. I'm sorry. I am. I'm tired. I'm, we stayed up. I think I stayed up until 8 o'clock this morning. At 9 o'clock yesterday morning. Um, last night, the, the storms were rolling in to where Yona was. And uh, Choosy and Charlie Brown and a few of us all, like, you know, stayed up <laughs> streaming late just to make sure that, you know, that we had some good, you know, good vibes going to Yona and everybody down there with all those tornadoes. It was insane. When do we have tornadoes in December and going 250 miles and, you know, going in a weird pattern? There's just a lot of, uh, 
a lot of stuff. Yes, they they literally all died who were right or die, unfortunately. Yeah, but you know what? I'd rather die authentic than uh, not authentic. <laughs> what you said here Aram what I like is this array of voices and opinions and the decency to acknowledge reality and pursue pursue truth and also the knowledge base that people were good enough to catalog digest and articulate I'm so tired now I have to read that again Yeah, I love the array of voices and opinions that we have. And yeah, yeah, like we can, we can, uh, we completely speak our truth and, and we do it in a respectful way with each other, which is, I think, you know, just, just so important, you know, like we don't have to agree on everything, but it gives us this beautiful opportunity to really just, have a safe place to be like, all right, well, you know, make, maybe we'll get in and we'll go raw and, you know, get loud with each other. If that's what we need to do. <laughs> or we can speak peacefully and, you know, like it, it, it doesn't matter as long as, you know, we know in the end that we're doing this together as part of our journey. And it's, you know, it's about going on the path together to making things better. Oh, Jimmy, you're so sweet. I think you're an incredible human being. <laughs> I think all of you are. See, my voice is getting all scratchy. All right. I am going to, I think, go off here in a minute. I am so grateful for all of you. I'm going to um, grab that link, the the links that you guys dropped in there. Um after and I'm going to put them in the description and uh I think that what's today I don't even know what today is <laughs> we will I will I will have those queued up so I can do those with you guys in the stream you guys probably know when I'll stream again based on what day it is because I'm not even sure what day it is let me look here <laughs> Okay, it's Sunday. So yeah, maybe we'll do something. We usually I think Steve usually does something on Monday night right after uh after Roar. Right? I think they do a dive on Monday, right? Yeah. So uh maybe later today or tomorrow. I know that I should have most of you guys around because, you know, that's just how we hang. <laughs> All right, y'all. I am going to, yeah, I'm going to go head out so I can get some sleep. I'm not usually tired at this time of night. It's kind of weird. And watch, I'll go up and I'll lay down and I'll be like, what the fuck? Now I can't sleep. <laughs> it happens all the time. But I love you all so much. And thank you for uh, tuning in and hanging out with us. Uh, hanging out with me and everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. Vicky, you're right. It's been a long day starting with finding out that Julian Assange had a stroke. Yeah. And what's crazy is that he had it like, I think they said October and we're just finding out now that he had one. And it's like, <laughs> like what, like this is insane. When I when I listened to uh, Stella, I stayed up that morning, and that's why I stayed up so late the other morning. Um, uh, when I when I went when I stayed up to watch that, and I you know Stella started talking about Julian, I just lost it. Like I was just like you know like I just started breaking down crying like. Like, it's, it's like watching, like, 
a horror movie on loop and it's like you just want to say like no like it's awful it's awful and i i really hope that everybody will take a moment and just you know put some positive vibes out there for not only you know julian and our brother oz down in australia and all the people you know like we're you know they keep saying like we're all in this together <laughs> well we are we are that's why we're gonna have a day of like you know positive vibes positive energy a positive healing day we're gonna we're gonna figure that out we're gonna have to do a stream just on like trying to brainstorm how we're gonna do that but as dim as it look and as dark as it looks not just because it's like you know i don't even know three in the morning here <laughs> not because of that but you know as dark as things look we do have each other to lean on and that is so important and that's why this is so important to have all of you you know like we even if you don't think that you're affecting somebody you're you know just being here and holding space it does you know and and the more that we hear about each other and our stories like i feel like it grows in our connectivity and the ability that we have to universally heal we can do it guys i have faith i won't give up i won't <laughs> i hope you guys don't give up oh all right, guys, I am going to go, like, actually lay down. This feels weird. I, I mean, sometimes I go to bed at this time. But, you know, like, usually I stay up a little bit later. But I'm going to get some good sleep. And I'm sure we will be on later today to hang out with you guys. Yeah, chamomile tea is just amazing. I got some of the, the dandelion tea from... From Oz over at Roar Media Live. You guys should definitely try it. Like, it is so, so good. So good. <laughs> but if you guys get some, uh, she has an Etsy, uh, Joey, Joey's Coffee, but uh, you can get it from Oz directly too. Really good. Oh, yeah. And like fresh coffee, like roasted coffee. Uh, Charlie Brown, <laughs> thanks to all for giving a shit. <laughs> it matters. <laughs> On that note, <laughs> I'm going to say good night for real. Namaste, fam. Thank you for holding space. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. Where's the button here? <laughs>